FM every Friday from 9.15 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. with Kingdom Health Services. Situated at number 125 Eastern Main Road in Tunapuna. For the program, Health and Healing, Merging the Old with the New with Mr. Brent Diet. For more information, call 318-7471 or 4840141 or 360-4100. It's all about Kingdom Health Services on the street, 919 FM. What is Apex? It is the pinnacle of high-performance vision through a lens. It's clarity, no matter what angle you look at. It's comfort, no matter what you do all day, every day. And it's customized with every digital measurement your eyes require to see at their very best. Apex Digital Lenses by Value Optical. The ultimate lens design for your eyes. Value Optical. Expert care for your eyes. Counselor for Monry Ponavet, Nigel Cotier presents Splash. Bubbles and Foam, Saturday 9th July at Monry Post Grounds from 10 a.m. Splash, Bubbles and Foam, lots of prizes to be won. Look out for the Councillor's Cup Small Goal. Register now by calling the Councillor's Office at 610-2861. All teams must be registered. There is no registration fee. Splash, Bubbles and Foam, Saturday 9th July, Monry Post Grounds from 10 a.m. The football starts at 10 a.m. and the fun events will start at 3 p.m. 
Hi, what's up, TNT? This is Wayne Johnson out of Brooklyn, New York. I always wanted to do something back home, and we're going to be doing our gospel segment on Mondays from 10 p.m. to 12 midnight. That's 10 p.m. to 12 midnight on 91.9 FM. Listen what I want you to do. Spread the word. Spread the word, TNT. Salvation, full and free. Salvation is for everybody. Mondays from 10 p.m. to 12 midnight. That's 10 p.m. to 12 midnight on 91.9 FM. Pastor Hannah A. Pabu of Holy Spirit Ministries will be live on the streets 919 FM every Wednesday from 1115 AM to 1145 AM. In the scripture, Matthew 19, verse 26, the Bible says, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Pastor Hannah is here to motivate you, challenge you, encourage you, to walk in your purpose and destiny God has for you. For prayer and counseling call, Pastor Hannah at 728-5197. Good about that, but then I get real bad. Are you ready for that book experience again? The Sea Champion and the Embassy say, Book with us for that unforgettable boat ride experience. Sea Champion leaving from Kings Wharf, San Fernando, and the Embassy leaving from Breakfast Shed, Port of Spain, or West Side Trinidad. For more information, call 399 5959 814723 or email us at coralvisiontt at gmail.com. Book now and reserve your cruise. This is Bishop Aaron Williams from the Divine Problem Solving International Ministries inviting you to be part of our broadcast on any given Thursday night from 12 midnight right on to 5 a.m. on Friday morning. And this broadcast is called Early Morning Gospel Market Program. Then we have on Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. If you are sick and ailing, you can get from this particular pharmacy from the pharmacist the good things of life. Hallelujah. And any Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Break into the host of the Philistines. Hallelujah. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, hearing the Babel of false doctrines that you encounter daily, it's about time you get close to God. God's word direct from his throne room in the name of Jesus. God has good plans for his people. Why do you worry so much? Tune in to the Street 919 FM for Gospel in the Bone Ministry every Sunday from 7.05 a.m. to 8.55 a.m. For the program, God's Last Warning Message. Hosea chapter 4 says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out and Blood toucheth blood. Remember, every Sunday from 7.05 a.m. to 8.55 a.m. For the program, God's Last Warning Message with Gospel in the Bones Ministry. Right here on the street, 919 FM. Share the line. Share the line. The Street 919 FM on Facebook and Instagram. Share the line. Iowa George on Instagram. Share the line. Iowa TV and Street Street TV on YouTube. Share the line. The Street 919 FM. The views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of the Street 919 FM. Yo, Yo. this is your boy ZD Rankin, and right now you're listening to the Titans of Democracy. You don't know. Real talk. Real talk.
Well, a pleasant good morning to each and everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Titans of Democracy right here on the street, 919 FM. Let me thank the Heavenly Father for bringing me here safe, sound, and all together in one piece. A pleasant good morning going out to my entire family. Good morning to the lovely Miss Sharon Felix, Mr. Dominic Romain, and their entire families. Good morning to you all, our callers. To all our listeners, all our viewers online, for those of you that are always locked on with us, it's always a pleasure to have you guys on the inside. Let me also say good morning going out to my friends and family in Tobago. Good morning, good morning. Hope you guys are doing fine this morning. Yes, saying good morning also to the management and staff of the street, 919 FM. Good morning to Mr. Iowa George and his entire family. So, today is Thursday, the 30th of June 2022. Yes, final day of June. Um, it's going to be a wonderful day, people. Don't worry, it's, it's going to be a great day. So let me just open up the lines so that you can call and give your morning greetings. And then we'll continue. I'm going to link up with Dominic and we'll be inside. So you can call me at 342-0081 and 466-5391. Yes. Call again. Wake up, everybody. No more be being in bed. No more back for thinking, time for thinking head. The world has been so very much in what they used to be. There is no more hate with one property. Morning, everybody. Morning, Bruce. Morning, Dom- Dominic. Morning, Sharon. Morning, girlfriend. Good morning, Miss Jean. Good morning to everybody. Seventy-five past the street. Good morning to you. I'm Faisal Bar. Good morning, uh, Jenny and Carl. Good morning, Tunapuna. Good morning, all the lovely people in Tobago. Good morning, Sabataya. Good morning, Sterling. Tumanoga. How are you doing? Good morning, Malcolm and Gemma. So Toronto. Good morning, and the people of Bonnet Gardens and Mount Hope. Morning to you. It's a lovely day. Wake up, mm-hmm. raise the sunlight, say a prayer, and. Do a good today. Try and remember something that they did, did good last week. And remember, today we work it again today. Do something good for somebody. Um, one of the Mongo, morning again. Love is the answer. Uh, go on. Yeah, man. Dina? <laughs> Three four two zero zero eight one four six six five three nine one. Call good morning. Blessed morning to you, my brother. Good morning, my brother. How are you this morning? Very good to be in the land of the living after yesterday. Mm. <laughs> it was cool. You know, they'll hang with the brothers and them. Nice. But they nice. right with the rain. <laughs> <laughs> you had a wet one. <laughs> I tell you, <it>, okay. <laughs> But he was always in water, you know, St. Peter was a fisherman. True that, true that. <laughs> right, that is how I get up part of that name, you mm. know. And the mission, he gave a shout out to the titans of democracy. Morning to Sister Jenny, Mr. Carroll, Mr. Chance, our constituency guru, Mr. Bartario, Byron, and Junior. There's so much to call him, Brother Sterling, such a lady, Miss, Miss Pfizer Band, everybody, good morning. Look down as you tell my brother. Yeah, Time to push back mm. at Bone King. Blessings. And a safe day. Yeah, man, you too, man. Likewise, God is always the boss king. For real. Right. Three four two zero zero eight one four six six five three nine one. This is where we give our morning greetings. Yes, call it the morning. Hello, good morning. Hello. This is only a noise hearing. Yes, I know here, and you're good, right? Yes. Morning, Bruce. Morning, morning. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. 
good morning to my family. Special good morning to Ms. Kanakona. Good morning to Aisha. Good morning to the whole of Trinidad. My cousin in law, Ms. Darcy Street. Good morning. Blessed morning to Ms. Shak Shak Lady. God bless her and you. Good morning, Ms. Tanapuna. Special good morning. Good morning to the whole of Trinidad and Tobago and all God bless her. Good morning, Dominic. Hmm. All blessing and Trinidad and Tobago and thanking God for what he did for us yesterday. Can't thank him enough because God is really a good God. Handsome, awesome, awesome God. Okay, you see? Yes. Have a good day. You too, my God dear. Bless Take care. you, my son. Yes. Okay. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Pussy. Morning, morning. How are you going? I did cool. How are you doing this morning? Oh, Daddy. You all right? Okay, thank God. Yes. <laughs> I called to say good morning, everybody. Mano, good morning. I hope you're feeling better here. You're under the weather, but try and come out from under the weather, please. <laughs> I want to hear your voice. Hope you're feeling good. Right, Mano? Everybody. Miss Tonopuna, Sharon, Dominic, 1285, Parsley Street, good morning, Sawaman, Malcolm and Gemma, Grandy, good morning, Tobago, Mora, good morning, everybody, Bruce, everybody, good morning, thank yes. God for a new day, you have a great day now, love, love, love everybody, bye. Bye-bye. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Bruce. Morning, morning. Morning to Sharon, Dominic, everybody. Morning to Mommy Jean and your daddy, Victor. <laughs> I wish everybody a happy St. Peter's because yesterday St. Peter's was St. Peter's Day. Yeah. And today is a special day for me. The day after St. Peter's is my birthday. So, telling greetings to everybody. Angie, everybody, from Fire and Yule. Yeah, Caller, good morning. Good morning to the Muslim. Morning, morning, sir. How are you this morning? Mo- great, great. And good morning to Dominique Collet from Ari Village Princess Town, Ari Village Branch of Princess Town. Morning to all of the titans of, of democracy, and to Sharon, Felix, and to all my friends in Princess Town here. And one quick thing I want to say I never saw Jenny yet, but I saw her on Facebook. And I want to come to make the look because I didn't. Not the person, but 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 but, but the African look at mm. and after holy voice and say, Jesus Christ, she's really African queen. <laughs> yes, Jenny, keep it up. Yes, One love yes. to everybody. Bye bye. Yeah, man, blessings. Yeah. Three four two zero zero eight one four six six five three nine one. Caller, good morning. Good morning, morning, Mr. Bruce Wayne and your family. Blessed love to you all this morning. I thank the Lord, praising the Lord all how for having us here in the land of the living once more this morning. Facing the sunshine this morning, because we could have been on the other side yesterday and the day before. You understand, Mr. Bruce Wayne? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Blessed love to Ms. Sharon Felix and her family. Best of luck to Mr. Dominic, all the other co-workers of the registration, Mr. Iwo George and his family. Blessed love. 
Such a love to the Prime Minister and his family and his colleagues. Hold on and that balance we hold on. Don't let go at all. Yes. Blessed love to Mano. Blessed love to Mommy Sauce, Angie, Oma Oga, Gemma, Shattered Lady, Miss Faisabad. Love you, darling. Blessed love. Miss Thomas, Professor. Blessed love to you. Yes, that's Mr. Chan. Blessed love to each and every one of the Titans. Yes. Guy and call, no name. Deep out. Yes. Blessed love. We don't hear about you again, right? Yeah, blessed love to my surroundings, Pastor Street Mover, become to my paradise side. Blessed love to you all. Wake up and face the sunshine and praise the Master for having us here, want to spare us our life. Right? Don't talk about Trini and Trini and God is Trini. God is not Trini, no? God just marking us. We are marking time. Yes, Mother Tanapuna, blessed love to you. Right? So let us hold on on that balance wheel and do the right thing, and God will take us out of trouble, right? So thank you, Mr. Bruce Wayne, for allowing me, and have a blessed love day, and we shall safe to meet your wife, the another family, right? Thank you. Okay. Caller, good morning. Good morning, sir. Morning, morning. Hey, Bruce, boy, I, I used to listen. I was watching on Facebook because I work in the Mm-hmm. And I they just fire my phone up in way, so I'm home no way. Mm. I'm 64 years old. I found it all. I just listen. I, I call um, Professor Sir Robert on him in the evening now. Okay, nice. Miss Sharon, we like a pleasant morning to you, miss. And Bruce, boy. I want the bread line, right? Hmm. Bring the rest of it, right? Oh, God. Um, anyway, I'm I, I frustrated. And, you know, I, I could call a rock station, but there's my station, the Street 91.9 FM. Nice, man. Well, it's good to have you. Yeah, there's my station. Hmm. What happened? I live in the constituency of Sipari, right? But I'm alone paying them in this area here, man. And you know, I was thinking something. They fire in the PNM and save in the UNC for what reason why Bruce Way. Hmm. Oh God. They find anyway, greatest my Prime Minister, Dr. Creek Christie or Rowley, that my person still I love you still. Yeah, man. Anyway, bless. Bruce, see what you could do for me now. Uh, if any CPF in back or here looking for somebody to work, mm -hmm. I'm ready. I'm a walker man, boy. So, right. Bruce, thanks for well, taking my number. call. No problem, man. I, I love you, man. I love the street, right? Yeah, man. At yes. the first two o'clock in the evening, and I know Sharon for like to listen to mm -hmm. the VNR show, right? <laughs> 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 love any host, man. Right? Yeah, man. Blessings. You have a good one still, man. Yeah, yeah, well, if I play some player blacks this morning, I'm like, me no bad mind nobody yet, right? Later, away. Yeah, man, bless. <laughs> <laughs> Caller, good morning. I lost it. Call me back. <laughs> Caller, good morning. Morning, bro. Yeah, man, bless. Yeah, morning, morning to the listeners. To the 91.9 family. Morning to the big birth, I was, George. The lady who called before Panas, they Panas. You had to fool them, boy. <laughs> you had to start to say you hate Roll. Remember, you had to live too, you know. And that, you know, that's the face of political prejudice and bigotry. Simple as Panas called there and explained that. Yeah. You know, that's where the country is suffering from. Well, on that side, what harm he could bring? Understand what I'm saying now. You know, it even if it's victimization or something, I find, you know, somebody could load up that scene in a kind of way. What happened? Hmm. The man is an open minded, normal brother. What harm he could bring to all your party? He could bring to all your party or anything, if that's the case. You know, so we had to address these things in the heart. I'm talking to everybody, if you understand what I'm saying. You know, it's a simple little principality. He call in there, you know, he, die we boy. 
Yeah. But that is the mm-hmm. principality that has affected this country, boy. If you understand what I'm trying to say. And that is what we just be battling on this radio station with love. And I like 91.9. From man who go right back, everybody positive and does come out with positive things. Yeah, we preview the support. You know, but sometimes these like the politics and deal with humanity, boy, Bruce, boy. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Have a nice day, everybody. Later. Yeah, man. Bless. Well, let me take this time out to say... Good morning to Mr. Dominic Romain. Morning to you, sir. Morning, sir. Morning, morning. Yes, yes, yes. How, how is the weather on your side? <laughs> we have excellent weather here. We had some, a little rain yesterday, but nothing the likes of which I'm seeing back home. So. <laughs> yeah, we, get, we get a proper blessing yesterday, yes? Uh-huh. That's what they call a proper the, blessing. The storm, the storm um, didn't get the memo. Boy, yeah, we're not supposed to come the night before. <laughs> and boy, <laughs> I, know. I, 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 I took in one more call before we before I get into the papers. Caller, good morning. Uh, Uncle Bushy, morning, morning. How you doing today? I did cool, my brother. How you doing? I'm doing okay. We're still under some weather in Tobago, but you know, nothing, you know, to uh, disturb anything really. The rain is falling. Normal rainfall, I mean the rainy season, so thank the Lord for that. Yep. And, all right, so I'm there listening all up to the Dad and Tobago. Morning, morning. Love you all, love you all. All right, Prime Minister, I, I think I overheard that you'll be back home today. Yes. Welcome back, welcome back. Yes, Prime Minister, love you, love you. All up to the Dad and Tobago. Auntie Shadow, morning, morning. Uncle Dominic, Uncle Busi waiting on you. Mm-hmm. All right. Bless. You all have a blessed, blessed day. You too, man. Take Bless care. Mm-hmm. So, guys, at this time, I'm going to get into the online papers for today, Thursday, the 30th of June, 2022. And as we do that, we hand it over to Mr. Dominic Romain. So, let's get in the papers and see what's taking place this morning. So, headlines in the Express, DPP ponders future on corruption cases. Piaco accused not yet free. AG's office, options to prevent accused from walking. Hmm. Fishing in the flood. <laughs> oh, boy. So let's get inside and see what's going on. So the Grand River overflows homes flooded near Leatherback Turtle Ness. The unusually shallow and lazy river running through the north coast village of Grand River became a raging torrent late Wednesday because of rainfall. Hmm. Piaco accused and not yet free. The ruling by the Privy Council that the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, cannot proffer an indictment against the accused persons in the Piaco. Hold on, getting quickly, 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 quickly. Right. In the Piaco number one case does not mean charges have been dropped and the accused are free. Hmm. Woodland residents living in fear. Residents of Woodland were left fearing the worst after the new cut channel of the South Orpooch River breached one of its banks yesterday, leaving hold on, leaving the community underwater. Hmm. 15-year-old missing. The police are seeking the public's help to find Samantha Reyes. Businessman and driver charged over an alleged illegal gun transfer. A businessman and his driver were arrested by the police in relation to an alleged illegal firearm transfer. Hmm. No COVID test to enter TNT quarantine facility at Cora for monkeypox victims. The monkeypox virus has been deemed a dangerous infectious disease in Trinidad and Tobago. Storm fears delay removal of body from forests. The body of a man found in the Kumaka forest in Valencia on Tuesday remained overnight as police officers were hampered by inclement weather conditions. Trinidad spared Tobago drenched Grenada hit. 
Mom murder defending daughter, panic before the storm, teen succumbs to severe burns. And these are the stories making way in the Express at this time. So we head over to the Newsday. My, my. Trinidad and Tobago spared major damage from weather system. Strong winds damage elderly Tobago woman's home. Haynes questions Evan Lewis comment to West Indies. Meteorolo meteorologists Trinidad and Tobago right to be on high alert for storm. Legal advice to AG. Piaco one case might not be dead. Search for body in Kumaka cut short by river and terrain. Wasa working to restore water to 200,000 customers after bad weather. DPP yet to decide on Piaco charges. Alwari knocks delinquents who block water courses cause flooding. High teacher turnout, fewer pupils on Wednesday. Teachers save the day for hungry students. Four men die of COVID-19 on Wednesday. Social media users relieved by, oh, okay. Irated by a storm warning. Safe night for client of Bel at Belmont Shelter. Kiss GM. Bread supplies to be restored by Thursday. Suspect in Sandy Grandy woman's murder still on the run. 27 gun sees businessman driver charge. Dial Singh, most health centers open Wednesday. Paho, speed up COVID-19 vaccination. New flights for storm-affected car passengers. Met Office extends adverse weather alert. And these are the stories making way in the news day. So let's see what's taking place over in the Guardian. <clears throat> so let's see. Headlines. Headlines in the Guardian. Water worries. Hmm. Dino Briega denounces fake posts on PM. Minister of Communications Simon Dino Briega has denounced posts on social media that yesterday alleged that Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley was being investigated in the U.S. for money laundering. What the hell? Grandy chopping attack victims still being stalked by fugitive suspect. Prime Minister due back today, several issues to address. Minority leader tells Farley to temper his rhetoric with government. Due to be sentenced for 2004 Mayaro murder. Sentence review for man convicted of Westmoreland's double murder set for October. Gordon. Effective Integrity Commission important for public life in TNT. 200,000 households without water due to bad weather. DPP to decide on way forward for Piaco one matter. Homeless people in Sando beg government to put systems in place to assist if storm hits again. Elderly woman ex escapes collapsing home in Tobago. No help coming tonight for stranded Matlock residents. Power reminds pandemic not yet over. Minister, no more need for COVID tests to enter TNT. The Israel standards for license not met at Roxborough Hospital. Ministry of Health, resumption of all non-essential health services in the regional health authorities. 
self-help to assist 35 families with repair work to their homes. And four more COVID deaths and 79 new cases. So these are the stories making way in The Guardian, The Express, and The Newsday at this time. So as we always advise you, go out there, get the papers of your choice, and see what's happening in the stories. So I turn you over to Mr. Dominic Romain. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <clears throat> so morning, morning to all the loyal listeners of the street, 919 FM. Uh, the loyal trolls as well. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you all too because you all helped uh, bring the number. Please continue to invite further trolls um, to join as well so they could get educated on a daily basis, you know, instead of listening to the trash. Um, well, I wouldn't even call them alternatives, but anyway. Um, good morning to Mr. and Mrs. Giuseppe, Mr. and Mrs. Ray G's. Morning, Angie. The mother to Napuna, good morning, Mano. Patiabas, good morning. Alison um, Haynes, morning to you. Good morning to uh, somebody else I'm supposed to. An old woman Olga, morning um, to you guys. Um, Mr. Chance, morning. Um, who's the, who's the, the, the couple that live in Florida, Bruce, as uh, oh, Mark, Mark and Gemma. Gemma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Morning to them as well. Uh, I don't know how far they are from, from here. It would have been nice to meet them before I, I uh, head back home. But, uh -huh. you know, I, I plan to make a couple more trips to the year. So there's always, there's always that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, boy. Um, so, so Bruce, um, I see there are a lot of people in, in Trinidad who are upset that the storm didn't hit. Really? Yeah, I went through Facebook yesterday and real people vex. Yeah. Who find this they waste their money to go and buy um, to go and buy supplies. You can't look at it that way. They could they shouldn't. We Who vex it as if, Yeah. <laughs> as if as if it's gonna go to waste. What day is it? It better to, you know, it better to be saved than sorry. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Like these people in here, I, I can't. They really, you know, they like to say Trinidad is not a real place. Trinidad is probably the only country where people vex a, a storm come in and, and it didn't and it passes us through. Instead of it saying, "Thank God, they vex." Um, every time a storm come in here, it is always passed through street. It's like people just put experience a storm. Some of them who complaining and griping, all your roof can handle a storm. You should be very very happy. I know quite a few people with them. Um, that the roofs, roofs are being held on my concrete blocks. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So, come on now. Leave all yourself. Those of you whose, whose roofs might be strong and all your vex, spare a thought for those persons who are not so fortunate. Right? People who live in flood-prone areas and who their homes are not um, underwater this morning, as it may have been if we had gotten the full brunt of the, of the storm as was being predicted. Hmm. I don't understand it. Hmm. So, of course, you know what's going to happen the next time we get such an event. Because people say, why waste that time? No storm I come in here. I'm by myself. Forget that. Mm -hmm. Typical journey. Uh, because you say it happened two, three times and nothing. So, I'm by then. I'm prepared. Not me now. And next thing it lash. And you're in problems. Making sure and prepare, yes? Yeah. So... Because when, when you least suspect it is, is, is when it will go up, man, no. Say, Correct. Ah, don't worry, man. Thing, not there. God what is that mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden, they know geography. Well, you know what? You're not big waste position and so yeah. on and this and that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so this one was upset to Philip Alexander. You know, <laughs> this man is a real... The word I want to use is not radio friend. Right? So he got known on the promenade ah. Tuesday to do a video, right? To show the vagrants on the pavement. You know, the government cruel and heartless because a storm come in and only take care of the, uh, the 
vagrants and, and so on. Now, to the best of my knowledge, there are facilities in and around Port of Spain uh, where such persons could have gone. You still say that when you finish, I'll tell you. Mm. <laughs> when you finish, I'll tell you. So, I would like to think, well, I know that notwithstanding the fact that many of these, um, you know, socially dispossessed persons may appear at times to be mentally unstable. I, I would think that if rain is falling to such a heavy extent, uh, they would know to go and seek shelter. But, you know, this man looks for every and any opportunity to seek relevance. Because right now he is irrelevant. Nobody's paying him any mind. Um, yeah, so what is he to do? Let me, let me go and see and, and highlight something here. And of course, you have a few followers who will share that foolishness. And they have Philip, get him. They ain't care about nobody. You only said he only 1%. Yeah, but he's a wannabe 1%. A counterfeit Syria, a counterfeit one percent, right? <laughs> Fighting for that type. Yeah, he probably had the color and maybe the accent, but the pocket <clears throat> can't stand up to that type. So he needs to take several seats. Come down from the Philip. Yeah, come down from there. Maybe <laughs> so. <laughs> but you know, let us turn out to be able to just thank God that that um, yet again we were spared. I don't know if it is people just want to experience a storm. It can't be that you, you want to do it. But if they really want to do, I don't want to pass that now. <laughs> yeah. I ain't heard that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I ain't think that. I ain't think that one more want to do this at all. Mm. No, no, no. But I, I could. Do want to tell you something? Eh? A lot uh-huh. of the um, a lot of the homeless people mm. I see in and about for the Spain and stuff. You know. If it is the, <laughs> if it is the say okay, you're all going on as as has happened in the past. Mm-hmm. We going on clean up the streets, right? We don't take everybody off the streets, sort them out, see who what going on, but who try to sort them out. Yeah, you know when they roll and wrong in the van, they ain't see nobody, right? Mm. Streets just be clear. <laughs> yes. Am I lying? Just be clear. Yeah. You don't see nobody. Mm-hmm. Where they going mm-hmm. by? Yeah. They had some place to go. There you go. I, I <clears> think <throat> I think when when Mr. Alexander was was um, interviewing, uh, one of the guys said, um, "Don't come wrong him. He choose to be here or some kind of shit." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now why would you? Why would you? Why would you go to do that? What is the reason behind that? Mm. The government don't care. According to you, Dominic, there are a lot of things in place. Yeah. Right? And when the government decide, okay, we're going to drive wrong and pick up everybody. They just mm-hmm. get the memo and nobody yeah. will be on the streets. The streets will be clean. Yeah. Nobody will mm-hmm. beg any mm-hmm. action here. Hey, big man, let me get a dollar in now, boy. Well, it's five dollars mm-hmm. now they want. They know, but they want no dollar again. Yeah, dollar care, man. Yeah. Big man, let me get a five dollars now. Mm. The, any day you see, they say, yeah, well, we pass. You don't want to clean up the streets. I don't know five dollars men out there, you know? Yeah, there's only be playing, man. All of a sudden, they get bright. But my same partner, who does he, he does, he does, he, when he walk, he does be tinging up his hand and tinging, yeah. he twisting up his head. You don't see him. Mm-hmm. You don't see him. <laughs> yeah, but people need to ask about some of these, some of these destitute persons, Bruce. They are quite happy with where they are. They don't want they don't they don't want to be taken off of the streets. Um they're not the living the life, there are no bills to pay, no worries. Their biggest concern for the day is to get something to eat. That's about it. Yeah. Some of them will tell you that they're on the streets because, you know, they just couldn't live at home with their, with their family. Some of them family put them out. Yeah. Um, and, and and these things, some of them are, you know. The families consider them to be pests because they're probably taking drugs or whatever as a kid. A variety of different things. Some of them is mental illness. You know, but the, what, what the government could only do so much. Again, we recall between 2010 to 2015. You know, when I recall that, eh, Bruce, the UNC is really the most corrupt. You know, they, they, they're supposed to be Guinness Book of Records, you know. <laughs> because for you to think, what would the idea of Recycling vagrants to make money. 
it taken a special kind of corrupt, a hmm. special kind of crook to come up with something like that. That you you design a program claiming to help destitute. You take these people off of the streets, put them in some shelter facility, you clean them up. Right? You get paid for that. And then take them out and put them back on the street. Uh, leave them there for a couple of weeks and then you, you bring them back in because you don't have enough numbers so you to really make the money. So you need to keep recycling them. You make your money off of people's suffering. And then all they want to talk now about who's suffering and who's struggling and whatnot. Do not me rule. Hmm. It's your party. Your party do that. Yeah? But all they, you know you want us to talk about the high price of food and the crime. But when these things was going on, do that. You had nothing to say. Your mouth was fingers on your lip. Your mouth had a zip. Do not. Eh? What happened? Your brain was an idle at that time. You wasn't seeing and hearing about them things. Where were you then? All of a sudden, now you're a great philanthropist. You're so concerned about what's happening in the country. But when these nasty things was happening, and they were robbing the, the taxpayers, do not. You had nothing to say about that. Hmm? You were under a rock that time, or you was eating our food? I, I, I think it's the latter. Hmm? Yeah. All of a sudden now, you all are the, 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 the vanguards of good governance. You're so against corruption, and you want best governance in Trinidad and Tobago. But I'll let you a blind eye between 2010 to 2015. I would like to talk about that. Everything we say about 2010 to 2015 is lies. Yeah? PNM propaganda, eh? despite the fact that the evidence is there to show it was a UNC person that was that mark, wasn't PNM. True. Yeah? But I'll let you forget that. Talk to Skippy. Anybody more UNC than Skippy back then? Yeah? But, anyway, right thinking citizens of this country wouldn't forget that. But we know. To Philip Alexander, waste that time. Even with, even with two minutes. So I saw I saw the um, the goodly senator, Anil Roberts, put out a, he did a, a doubles and coffee eight minutes, a couple of days ago, Bruce, on this this uh, development with the Piaco. Um, issue and the yeah. Privy Council rule. Right? So he come on to talk about, and again, typical, um, you know, the, the judiciary is PNM too. Because the, the appellate court in Trinidad and Tobago, that what the Privy Council see, the appeal court in Trinidad and Tobago couldn't see, right? And so now he's thanking these old white men in, in England. He never thought the Dogla would have do that, but he's thanking these old white men in England for, um, you know, the decision that they made and whatnot. But, yeah. Everybody in Trinidad is the EBC is PNM, the judiciary is PNM, the police is PNM, everybody is PNM. Hmm. Well, then, what do you, I don't know, let me to ask you, listen, why nobody is, is UNC? Hmm? Why all of these institutions don't support the UNC? Because they know they're no damn good. Yeah? But I'm not saying that the, the court is, is PNM. Eh? The court would have looked at the issues, looked at the evidence and so on, and made a decision. Because it was Anand Ramlugan, the best attorney general, and Trinidad to be work for it to the UNC. We said, nah, don't worry, we could try them here. They don't need to go abroad. Yeah, they go here. So I listened to, to the eight minutes, right, Bruce? Hmm. Yeah, open this. Uh, where well, wh- 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 are you getting to? I listen, I listen. Eight minutes. Not no substance. You know, I had to comment. I said, this man, make me waste eight minutes of my life trying, waiting for him to make sense. Well, he responded. Uh-huh. I was happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He replied, say, uh, well, Dominic Romain, the, uh, the report actually takes about 18 minutes to read. So you're still 10 minutes short. Well, I replied. I said, I said, Anil Roberts, Julie noted. If the report going to take 80, if it took you 18 minutes to read, it will take me 10 because I don't need the assistance of a dictionary while I'm reading. Yeah? <laughs> okay, and all the big words inside the eye hole on the men say, what they say here? All right, what I would mean? Okay. All right, what I would mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like I shut them down with that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You go on the man page, I hit any man for six. <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you, Bruce, when these things show up at my time, people share. I'm not responding. So who shared? I went directly on the page. I'm not playing that, right? It's a long time. I, this is the second time I've, I've engaged this man. Yeah? He and, and, and the same Philip Alexander, too. Yeah, but you see, when I shut them down, yeah, right. 
So, of course, you know, he had to get one of his, uh, one of his minions decided to jump on to challenge me. No, lady. Don't do that. You're not ready for this dance. Okay? She come to list out a whole set of things about, about uh, and and all kind and of kind of chopidness and much money spend and thing and thing. I said, madam, the only response that your comments um, warrant is I own. And by the way, it seems like you need to invest in a dictionary too. And I suggest you invest in the one for dummies. That's why she ran to me at time is she. Waste her time is Andy Roberts I want to speak to. So. Yeah. Nick, we're going to the break. <clears throat> Yes, sir. And we'll be right back. So, guys, keep it locked. We'll I'll send you right something on WhatsApp so you can put up that for money. All right, no problem. Yeah. FM for the program The Final Hour with Pastor Valentine Garcia Jr. and his wife Nikki Garcia for the Bible study every Thursday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 says go into all the world and preach this gospel for every creature for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. John chapter 8, verse 32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tuning to the Street 91.9 FM every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. for the program Walking in Truth with me, Pastor Gary Grant from Walking in the Spirit Ministries. Come, let's discuss how Christ Jesus can set you free. God bless you. If your hands are anointed, Friday, 
It's all about Firewood Soccer Fridays with MC Duke and Selector Kochi from 6 straight to 9 p.m. Blazing all the latest and past soccer hits. So remember, make it a line, make it a day, rock and come in, you know. It's all about Firewood Soccer Fridays on the Street 919 FM. Don't know. Trinidad, get ready for the grown folks affair. Sexy in white. Saturday, 2nd July. At Rock Band, the Anchorage Shagaramas. From 10 p.m. till 4 a.m. DJs, Clyde the Outlaw, Foreign Bass, and Ishmael the Demolition Man. Special guest artist, Colonel Roberts. Yeah, yeah, it's your boy Colonel Kitch Roberts here. And it's all about sexy in white. July the 2nd at the Anchorage. I will be there with all my songs. And I even touch in some of my father classics as well. Only medium coolers allowed. Get your tickets now at Crosby St. James, Seons Beer Garden, San Fernando. For tickets and more info, call 375-2257 or log on to www.freeupal.com. Sexy in Y, Saturday, 2nd July at Rock Band, the Anchorage Shagaramas. Brown Eyes Promotion presents... All White Affair Cooler Cruise. Cooler Cruise on Sunday, the 3rd of July 2022, on board the luxurious Embassy Yacht. Boarding at the Port of Spain waterfront, the Ryston Road in Port of Spain at 2 p.m. Sailing Trivia. Music by Sensational Sammy, Dr. Ross, and the guest DJ Selector Mafia. Advance tickets are $200, pay more at the door. For more information and for tickets, contact Romeo at 748-9335 or Sweet Vanilla at 793-7425. No oversized coolers or glass bottles allowed. We don't send body people better, we call them trouble, trouble, trouble. You are invited to join Pastors Morris and Agnes Johnson of the Church of the Firstborn Assembly Miracle Center, located at number 399 Eastern Main Road, Guayco in Sangri Grandi, for the old-time gospel hour all-night prayer. This and every Friday evening on the street 919 FM from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Designed with you in mind, this program deals with today's issues from a biblical perspective. You will also be given the opportunity to call in and interact with us. Micah 6 8 says, he hath showed thee O man what is good and what doeth the Lord. Require of thee but to justly and to love mercy and walk humbly with thy God. Your financial support through the First Citizens Bank will be greatly appreciated. Account number 795-222 For further information call 753-1113 or email us at church 66 Eight hope at gmail.com Tune into the street 91.9 FM every Sunday from 10.05 a.m. to 11 a.m. For the repairing of the Breach Radio Program with me, Bishop Shoenau Thomas. The scripture says, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairers of the breach, the restorers of the paths to dwell in. Don't miss it. Repairing the Breach Radio Program with Bishop Shoen R. Thomas. On the street, 919 FM, every Sunday from 10.05 a.m. to 11 a.m. Join Pastor Kelvin Heinerein and friends for The Way, The Truth, The Life Radio Ministry, a Church of God ministry, live on the street 919 FM from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. This and every Sunday on the street 919 FM. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me. John chapter 14, verse 6. For further information, contact Six eight six three eight four five three four nine five one seven eight or three four two seven three zero three. Are you experiencing terror? Experiencing pain? Poor mood, stress, strife.
driving you insane. Free yourself from all this hell. Something in life yet to make you well. Does the fountain of life here to protect you? For info, call 620-9379 or 309-4697. What is Apex? It is the pinnacle of high-performance vision through a lens. It's clarity, no matter what angle you look at. It's comfort, no matter what you do all day, every day. And it's customized with every digital measurement your eyes require to see at their very best. Apex Digital Lenses by Value Optical. The ultimate lens design for your eyes. Value Optical. Expert care for your eyes. If you're experiencing pain, constipation, headaches, poor blood circulation, high or low blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, swollen or darkened feet, come visit us at Health and Wealth Lifestyle, located at 73 Eastern Main Road, Barataria, opposite Eastern Credit Union. We at Health and Wealth Lifestyle offer a wide range of services. Come and experience our new 3D analyzer, which allows you to have a look inside your body. We also provide live blood analysis, iridology, ionic foot detox with foot soap and foot massage, aqua therapy, full body massage and organic supplements on sale such as nano silver, nano zinc, body light, cold pressed sesame oil and more. Health and Wealth Lifestyle located at number 73 Eastern Main Road Barataria opposite Eastern Credit Union. For more information call 275-8359 or 288-1108. Join Nicole Hudson for Health and Wealth Lifestyle every Monday from 9.05 a.m. to 9.55 a.m. right here on the street, 919 FM. Screw that boat, I'm not gonna get real bad. Are you ready for that boat experience again? The Sea Champion and the Embassy say, look with us for that unforgettable boat ride experience. Sea Champion, leaving from King's Wharf, San Fernando, and the Embassy, leaving from Breakfast Shed, Port of Spain, or West Side Trinidad. For more information, call 399-5959-281-4723, or email us at coralvisiontt at gmail.com. Book now and reserve your cruise. And I'm both telling the guy you're going to and the people better we call the Share the line. Share the line. The Street 919 FM on Facebook and Instagram. Share the line. Iowa George on Instagram. Share the line. Iowa TV and Street Street TV on YouTube. Share the line. The Street 919 FM. Yo, Yo. this is your boy Ziggy Rankin, and right now you're listening to the Titans of Democracy. You don't know. Real talk. talk. So welcome back, welcome back on the inside. If you're just joining us, you're locked on to the street, 919 FM. This is your Titans of Democracy with Dominic Romaine and Bruce Wayne. Hmm. Eh? Yes, sir. <clears throat> hmm. Um... <clears throat> So you read just now uh, um, my story there about Prime Minister and some rumor going around. Yeah, Papa. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen us in a second. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to find it here. When somebody sent this to me, I had to give him a, choice, a few choice words. What I say? It's a good thing for him, I don't cuss. Hmm. I mean, should I know better than to send me that nonsense? Right. So, they, they post up a picture of the Prime Minister. Um, breaking news, world politics. The Prime Minister 
is probably under investigation for money laundering by U.S. authorities. And then there's this Facebook profile. This individual mm. who goes by the name Johnny Walker. Obviously not his real name. Hmm. He says, you could get U.S. at the local banks to carry out your business. You can't, sorry. Get U.S. at local banks to carry out your business transactions. But Keith Rowley has access to it in such a volume that he's now in U.S. custody being quizzed for several transactions over the past five years. But this Johnny Walker character has uh, <clears throat> had several run-ins with Stuart Young, in fact. Um, certain comments he had made on Facebook some time ago about Stuart Young resulted in Minister Young, I think, um, indicating that he was taking legal action against the individual for things that he has said. I understand that Annie Roberts also shared that foolishness on his blue liar politics uh, spoke about it and the members of the literati would have run with it because you know speculation every time it seems every time the prime minister goes to california and spends some time the unc rumor mill goes into overdrive to come up with some kind of nonsense so the last time he went nobody was saying how oh, can i think that he had cancer they say that he was by the he went there because he have some outside woman. He has some child over there. Now they say in that um, this money laundering. Well, <clears throat> you see, I want to tell you members of the UNC literati something. You see, anytime a rumor like that spreading, and the pussycat from Orofuch have nothing to say, don't give it life. Hmm. Even if he has something to say, because he's an ex-liar too. Right? Same liar who came and told us about 500,000 wire transfer and all kind of nonsense. And he had evidence and he had documents. Right? And put the documents in a manila folder, stick it in a drawer for a whole year. So he waiting for the police to come and question him. And he was so concerned, you have evidence that could bring down the government. In fact, your claim okay, could bring down four governments. They said that in 2017. Mm-hmm. In 2022, we're still waiting. You see? You see how these guys are damn blasted mm-hmm. liar? Yeah. This man will have a whole press conference with him. The UNC has information. This information could bring down four governments. We're talking international business here. This, this is major. You have evidence that could give the UNC back, hand back power to the UNC. How do you do it? You put it on that bushel. Uh-huh. You put it in a cupboard somewhere to collect us. And you're so sure that this information is so credible that you could have bring down the Rowley government in two years. And you ain't doing nothing about it. Huh? And? To the members of the illiterate, you always know feel when these clowns do that. When they call a press conference, they say, okay, that's a gap. And you only hear about it once. If Munilal really believed that allegation that he had made about the Prime Minister and this issue with the AB drilling and money and stuff, you would think that he would have pressed on the matter, right? Yeah. You see, he went all the way to Miami to get information. Quite Miami came to get information mm. on this issue. And you get your information where you do. You come and you mount it off in Parliament and then that was it. Go back to your office and you say, I'll put it in the in the conspiracy drawer. And it's the only conspiracy draw for a whole year. And then you come in, you come back one year later to say, What is going on with the investigation? But the police ain't calling yet. Well, Gary was the was the um, the commissioner of police. I show you her Gary number. Why didn't call Gary and say he come for this? And after the investigation into the matter was completed, and basically the police say, yeah, damn blasted liar. Okay. Well, hmm. I didn't make no allegations about no um, no uh, thing. What does he say, boy? Um, no bank account. I made an allegation about a wire transfer. And the police's information is that the police still investigating that. And then Gary had to come out and say, well, I don't know where you get your information from. That investigation is closed. We investigated thoroughly. We went abroad. In fact, when we went to the U.S., to speak to U.S. authorities and U.S. law enforcement on this matter, they laugh at us. They, 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 they the Tobago police, according to Gary Griffith, approaching U.S. authorities on this matter. Became a laughing stock. Hmm. U.S. authorities only for real. So some clown come in your parliament and 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 see make an allegation and only decide to exhaust, uh, expend resources and so on and this foolishness. Nah, man, only really backward. So that is really not a real place. Gary basically said, Moilal is a damn blasted liar. Keys closed. Hmm. 
What was your take on that dude, nah? Hmm? Tapish? How do you feel about that? And once again, yeah? Allegation. What about the vaccines that were stolen from Cuba hospital? Whatever became of that? Hmm? And the list is very long that I could call out of all the allegations that they like to make every Sunday morning. And that's the first and last time you will hear about it. So this one with the Prime Minister now under investigation for money laundering for transactions for the last five years. Are you serious? Hmm. Really? Come now, man. Are you not, are you not interested in, in the eight million with Ishan Steve that Jack told us Kamla got? No, Jack is a liar. Eh? We could dismiss that outright. But are you spreading um, propaganda with this thing with Dr. Rowley? Well, I'm sure when the Prime Minister comes back today, you'll have a few choice words for you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm sure he will. <laughs> yeah. For real. No, 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 no doubt. And everybody going and tote feelings when he don't talk. Yeah, but that's the business. And they want him to apologize. Mm-hmm. And the media better do um, rub him the wrong way. Because um, they will get it too. Let me see if I find this thing here. Um, listen. Uh, I saw that, that uh, Simon De Nobrega, the minister of information had sent out a well you know it's unfortunate that 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 even had to happen this hmm. it says um this is from the minister i received multiple messages today concerning the original version of the image attached and two others in circulation that are just as misleading however i refuse to empower the authors by reposting them because their names are included here are the facts the Prime Minister traveled to the U.S. for the Ninth Summit of the Americas. The Prime Minister then extended his stay in the U.S. that tended his personal health care. These, the matters, these matters are a public record. I don't know the authors of the post circulating, but it is instructed that almost everyone who sent me the post identified one as a known UNC operator. I won't make a pronouncement on that, but a cursory review of their post will be sufficient for anyone to come to their own conclusion. What I do know is that it is, this is straight out of the UNC opposition's playbook. It is textbook misinformation and it is a distraction. It is consistent with the near constant flow of misinformation in the public domain that must then be addressed out of respect for the public whom we see. And which then takes us away from being able to address very real concerns the public has. Mm -hmm. These posts, like others from other operatives, first and foremost are devoid of any facts or this is a fact. They are also daily responsible and inflammatory with their words, but this should come as no surprise to people either. This is the behavior to which we have become accustomed. What we need to understand is the intention. It is to plant the seed of doubt and contention. Unfortunately, when they inevitably retract these words, they know the damage will have been done. And that's the key there, Bruce. Hmm. That is what UNC does. They put out the lies, the nastiness, and the propaganda, right? And they put it in such a way, they couch it in such a way that it, it, it looks like it might be something genuine, that it might have some level of truth, well, to the so heads out there, right, the illiterati. But they know, once they put that out there and the illiterati latch onto it like flies, that's it. It doesn't matter what truth, what evidence, what facts comes out after to refute that. The illiterati hug up that, yeah, they lie in, ten, this, that, yeah, then the next. And that out there and it spread like wildfire. It end up on Facebook, social media, and when you look at the number of times, it is shared and the comments. Yeah, boy. That is yeah. the thing. Yeah. Like wildfire. Ooh. So when they tweet out, that is it. You have people who so want to hate this government and hate Dr. Rowdy, that you could tell them what. They know what. I believe this. And this is the truth. And, okay. I continue. This cannot be the way we operate as a nation. The government understands that it has hard work to do at, at, at a very hard time. But we understand our job and we will continue to do it. These posts were intended only for mischief, bacchanal, and the creation of doubt and authority, and they should be dismissed as such. Simon de Nobrega, member of parliament. Hmm. Right? Um, let me see. So, oh, the original? Well, I don't know if it was the original post, but someone by the name of Yes, Robinson had posted it. Um, it appears he took it down from his speech. I'm not seeing it. He was there. It was there last night. Hmm. Yeah. No, here it is. Right. 
foreign accounts under scrutiny. A senior official from Trinidad and Tobago is being investigated by the U.S. for potential money laundering under a very strict New York customer process due to multiple um, SARS, whatever that is, initiated and after multiple suspicious transactions were identified in accounts linked to the official. As part of the New York customer controls, U.S. compliance officers began enhanced EDD on the official, monitoring transactions and discovered suspicious um, source of fund transactions which require explanation as they appear to breach the anti-money laundering um, rules and guidelines. Any money, <coughs> in particular transactions of U.S. foreign currency accounts linked to the U.S. are a national security imperative to the U.S. government and often people are called to explain the accumulated volume of wealth and the origin of money for assets used in the business transactions. Part of the New York customer process, investigators will examine multiple areas of, of engagement during the investigation, looking at adverse media establishing their person, um, politically exposed persons and or SFPF status and whether or not the target presents an elevated money laundering risk, possible sanctions to be imposed for breaches. Right, so I guess that is the, that was put out there by Mr. Pierce Robinson and the UNC pick it up and now how how they how that they would they deduce that Dr. Rowley is this person is beyond me, right? So the allegation is well the reason why Dr. Rowley was out there for so long is because he was being questioned by the US authorities. Okay. Right. <sighs> Never a dull moment this. As per usual. Yeah. Are we still waiting on the Results of the police investigation into the 135,000 that Barry gave camera. Hmm. That he can't remember where he gave her for, but she could remember. Right? Okay. Where's the, 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 the clip that I sent you there, right? Yeah. Um, remember a couple of weeks ago where we had a recruitment drive for persons to, um, who were seeking jobs um, on the cruise ship, right? Yeah. We saw the long lines mm -hmm. and um, we had these bright fellows in Trinidad and, and Tobago um, who were claiming the reason for the long lines because all these people were unemployed. It's re a reflection of the state of the economy and the mismanagement of the economy by the government of Keith Rowley. And all these people lost their jobs and most of them. Play that clip. This is a clip from Jamaica. But the same um, recruitment drive, same cruise line, right? Really? Finally, Keith Rowley is the Prime Minister of, of Jamaica, and we didn't know that. <laughs> so it's a full compliment on the ship, so you want housekeepers, bartenders, mixologists, um, so on and so on. And so, on. so it's a ship recruitment program, a recruitment program that will last for eight months. Yeah. And uh, you will be, you will, you will be ducking, ducking, separate and apart in several. How many persons are they seeking? Over 10,000. We are going to pull it together. Yes. Yeah. Pull it down. Yes. We are not here enough. 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 We saw no such scenes in Trinidad. No, right? it, it wasn't done like that. Certainly not. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they could have killed that poor man on the fence. You understand? <laughs> he see, I see he pass out three papers about, about four hand grab it. <laughs> I see what they go rip it. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, uh, I said, like, Dr. Ali is the Prime Minister of um, Jamaica and the PNM is the government in Jamaica, right? Hmm. And, um, yeah, so what we just saw and heard there, yeah, mm -hmm. that wasn't Trinidad. Yeah, but it was only in Trinidad, yeah. People suffering, they don't work, they no jobs here. That is the reason for the long line. So is the reason in Jamaica. Hmm? 
Right. My military element is just a genuine desire on the part of these citizens for the opportunity to work on a cruise ship. Yeah, we don't, we don't deny that some of the persons, um, maybe quite a lot of the persons in the line were unemployed. Some of them would have been unemployed prior to the pandemic. Some of them are underemployed, but it's just seen it as, a, as, a, as an opportunity want to travel the world to, to make some us dollars. Um, hmm. You know, to do some stuff that they, they've always wanted to do. But no, that's not the reason. It's only because people it have no jobs and everybody unemployed. So in St. Lucia, where the same thing happened, yeah, Keith Rowley is the Prime Minister, there are two and the PNM is the government. And, and all the other Caribbean territories where they go in, where they have gone, and where similar uh, long lines have been experienced, yeah, rather than to do with people who are generally wanting to work on cruise ships with the opportunities they presented there. Yeah. Sure, okay. We had to put up any weight. Look. Who's ever got the narrow custom? A very good thing, Arukas. Oh, gosh. Well, I, I try to take the members of the, the literati, Bruce, I mean up here, right? And, and one day, perhaps the most common thing that I've seen in the last couple of days and in, in all the stores that I've gone to is people up here are uh, leaving jobs, right? Mm. En masse. So any store you're going to, you would see they have like maybe... Um, these, these key, the cashier enclosure, they have for like maybe 15 to 20 cashiers. Mm-hmm. And if you had three or four cashiers, that's it. Long, long lines in the stores because they just don't have, people just don't want to do the job. They, they can't find employees. So I went to, um, I went to TJ Maxx in, um, no, was it TJ Maxx? Why? No, the Burlington Coat Factory in, uh, in Sawgrass Mall. Um, and Bruce, you should see that the line make three, and, and it's long, eh? Three long lines, three. Four, they have 26 cashier enclosure and only four cashers. Wow. And I hear any guy over the intercom saying, Do we, if we have any available um, cashers, please come to the front. Please, any available cashers, please come to the front. No, nope, not a soul come. Hmm. They had two separate areas one, one set of, of cashers on one side of the store, yeah. and it's a massive store, a huge store. One set on the other side. Goes up to the front, like their shift finish, they lock off, they say they're done. They, they're okay. We done work, chef, nobody ain't interested in overtime or whatever it is. Because it was an opportunity. So just yeah. the, the cash down at the, at the other end, four of them struggling. And these malls close at 11 o'clock in the night. Yeah, hmm. yeah I like children. So, pressure. But I watched that line. I watched that line, those. It's only because the only reason, and it's just two items I had, it was. <laughs> yeah, it's only because I really wanted those two things that I, I sat up in the line for, for almost 45 minutes now. But as I had to say, not today, <laughs> I want to leave that on the, on the rack and go my way. <laughs> yeah, it was not true, that was no. And for all the things that they like to say about Trinidad and Trinidad, and Trinidad when I arrived in the airport, um, and man. People, FSA people, like about maybe about 10 flights came. Hmm. Their immigration area is huge, right? So they have all section for US citizens, green card holders, and, and stuff. And there was a, a section for US uh, for um, non citizens and, and visitors. FSA people, groups, when we reached there, five immigration officers. So we like to complain in Trinidad and come here, here, yeah, boy, this and that, we're in Trinidad. We had to wait, wait, long, long, five. And our airport doesn't accommodate the amount of flights that that airport. I mean, our airport, Bruce, is like a hangar in Miami. Hmm. That airport is so huge that to get from one end to the next, you had to take the sky train and all kinds of things. It is massive. I mean, all of these people come in here. And there's long lines. So the line crawling, it crawling. Well, eventually, I guess they, they get the picture. They went and bring a few more. Well, they call them customs and border patrol officers. Yeah. So they bring in a few of yeah. them. They process mm-hmm. you come in, take your picture, scan your four fingers, your thumb, four fingers, thumb, and they have a so the system, so your, your fingerprints are in the system. The system shut down because of your volume of people goes. Shut mm-hmm. down. So we just stand up there waiting. Waiting. They're like, okay, folks, gonna be here for a while. All right. I'll be waiting. And them fellas and them get tired, they get up, they come out. 
the change they work about the laughing, the joking, and beast and up there in the line grinding like a sugar mill. Mm, I go, can't do nothing. Well, I had to go through this process in order to get inside. So hard luck. Wait, wait, wait. Eventually, the system come back up. Yeah. They started to process people again. But of course, while we waited, more flights coming in, more people coming in. And the average, the size of these planes will in anywhere between 150 to 200 and something people. All these people coming in, he's in there. So we stand up there, it could be anywhere, Bruce, I'm telling him between maybe 15 to 1800 people in this room waiting. Now I'll wait till you use your phone. Think, well, you do your car grumble in Trinidad, you know, like in the bank, they go start across. What do you saw and so going on here? Eh, uh huh? Do that then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we are well behaved when we go outside. Oh, of course. We are well behaved when we go outside. <laughs> yeah. Did, and the grub, the grub, and the voice. You just hear people, huh? They ain't gonna say it too loud for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody, nobody in jumping on the whole cell to go and say, Hey, watch now. But we're really going yeah. out all in front there, right? <laughs> nobody in doing that. No, no, no. Nobody in doing that. <laughs> if I'm proper, Bruce, I've seen them every time. Every time I'm born, I put you a sunglass, and never see the smile. <laughs> well, you cannot, you cannot tell who was Chinese in the line because the only, the only people wearing masks is Chinese. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Because on the plane, they relax the rules now, so on, well, on American um, airlines and stuff here. It's op optional if you want to wear any mask or not. And then, well, of course, when you land here, um, well, hardly anybody wearing masks. So if you go in a store and you see somebody wearing a mask and you, you hear the accent, we're well, like, these are three. I'm one or two Americans who wear here, yeah, but Dominic. yeah. But we home here. I know God, <laughs> yeah. when Rory and them go raise it, they all sing and them this and that. We still have to wear masks. And, and, and as, they, yeah. as you jump out, uh -huh. you had the most, you had the most of three and four masks you have on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, they know about COVID. Yeah. So apparently, COVID here um, is different from the one in China. Mm. So you have no problem wearing it here. So you have no problem Yes. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah, they got to do boy. I mean, it is it is what it is. And then, and then it's a big one. I saw the, the debate, um, you know, Pali Augustine. Call it to So, I don't know if it is he was winding up the debate or whatever it is in his capacity as the Secretary for Finance. And he decided to take a job at Kelvin Morris, who is the minority leader. And he's, he gets up and, and as is typical Fali, wants to get into the whole theatrics and so on. You can't just get up and deliver your, your contribution, whatever. It's always a whole setup, you know. So he talks about, as he listened to his colleague, because, and he was chastised for this quite recently by Hojoy Charles. He's never on time for anything, right? Always late. But he had some meeting. He was supposed to have some meeting with Ocho Charles and some others and came late and, and um, you know, Ocho Charles lamented the fact that it is a, a common practice for Pali Augustine now, right? Because he, he busier than everybody else that you want to be booking several different um, things at, at, at one time. So he arrives late to the session. He talks about how, you know, on his way here, he was listening to... Kelvin Morris's presentation online and then he come in and, and he can't help but reflect that this was his his good friend, this was his schoolmate, and then they were in form six together and so on. But he deduces that sometimes we could be in the same class but not of the same class. Right? Yeah. These cheap shots. I want to tell Fali, you're very right. You could never be in Kelvin Morris's class. Right? He's a cut above you still. Because since you become chief secretary, you've shown yourself to be wanting. You've been weighed, measured, and found wanting, right? And it speaks to a level of arrogance on your part. That every opportunity that he gets um, to pelt a job at the PNM and so on, do your work. The very same thing that you want to be accused in the PNM is what you what you're doing. You're coming and making a set of allegations and saying a whole set of things, and then nothing comes out of it. You're behaving like the UNC. Right? You come the other day to talk about oh, all the secretaries and stuff, all, all the things that you all found when you came in, and but you leave it up to them if it is that they want to speak about it. So you're making claims that you found evidence of wrongdoing on the part of the last administration. But rather than expose it, you say, well, hmm, if all you want to, all you could, but it's neither here nor there. So that's what that's what the PDP supporters voted for. Hmm? 
So these things, these matters are not so serious that before you wanted to send <coughs> the, the um, zipline to the DPP, to the police, to this one, to that one, and every and anybody. But now you're telling us you found evidence of wrongdoing in every department, and you're telling the, the other secretaries, well, it's up to them if they want to make an issue of it or not. If they want to get political mileage from it or not. Uh, there's things that we could overlook. Hmm? But you made an issue of the zipline, right? Okay. And that making sense. That is how that is what you call transformational leadership. Make your allegations are wrongdoing and then leave it out there. Because you know if you do investigations, chances are you're going to find evidence that is going to refute your claims. Hmm. And rather than pursue that issue, you hush your mouth. Where is Martin George? Where is Vanus James? Vanus who seems to have vanished. I have not heard a word, not one utterance from Vanus James since the PDP one election in December. Where is he? His brother who had a comment on everything and anything. Well, he eat a food. He or she mouth now. He has nothing to say. Hmm. He has no comment to make on any any issue of national importance. He too busy eating up. And what did I say them? All of you who had a million and ten things to say on when it was the last administration. Even to comment now on the things that Farley has to say about the last administration. Are they under say? Hmm? The man, the jockey shots award man, Martin George, where are you? You continue to demonstrate that you deserve the jockey shots award. Give yourself. Man who come on national TV and hold up your boxers, his tighty white teeth, talking about jockey shots award. You need to go and look in the mirror, Martin, and give yourself that award. Hmm? All of us are all interested in, let us work with the THA for the betterment of Tobago. You couldn't do that when the PNM was there. Now let Petticoat show him. Gluing neon green, yeah, but mm. the each is on, you know, it's already there still. Um, money sharing here, there, and everywhere. The money that they didn't have to buy tea plates, money they didn't have to give all their water and juice if you come to, to a THA function, but all of a sudden they find money to give out um 1.6 million dollars to 62 maxi drivers, maxi taxi drivers. So they claim, um, it was supposed to be drivers who drop children to school. But these drivers were badly affected during the lockdown when there was no school. And so man get twenty five and fifty thousand dollars to fix up their maxi bus. Yes, so. Hmm. So your maxi was in such a state of disrepair that you needed thirty thousand dollars to fix it. And you won your claim that you weren't working for this period of time? Money fine. Money found to give out house guns. Nothing wrong with other people. People are deserving. You know. But you came in to office six months ago, stating it had no money. The last administration in the THA um, vacuumed the treasury in Tobago. They spent out money, and you know where they spend the money on. We have money for this unspent balances, 50 million, and that is not enough for us to do what we need to do, and all of that. But all of a sudden, now you're finding money for projects that were nowhere on the horizon. Hmm? Where did money magically come from, Valley? Tell us now. You went digging up somewhere, and you find it in a drawer? Yeah, asking them questions. You see it for what it is. It's just a, a, a bold attempt to bribe um, persons into view. And we know that there are those who will, act, who will willingly accept these bribes. I mean, um, what happened to the constituency fund? $10 million, what happened to that? The extra payments. You can find $1.6 million to pay 62 maxi taxi drivers, but you can't find whatever is the amount of money to pay the THA workers their $1,000 um, extra payment that they were supposed to get since Christmas. We are now to the end of June. And valid? No, but you want to get up to tell Kelvin Morris about um, he's not in your class. What is your class? Define that for us now. Your class. What is Watson Duke's class? Hmm? What, um, when was the last time Watson Duke was, did Watson Duke make a contribution to the debate? I didn't see it because I went on his Facebook page and I know normally he's a man he's a man of showmanship. So he would have posted it up on his Facebook page. Perhaps I missed it. But he's more um, concerned with sharing out loaves of love in Trinidad and in all loaves of bread. <clears throat> hmm. I remind you, as he said, when Jesus, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, tempted him with bread, not chicken and chips. Right? He didn't come with burgers. He offered him bread. 
Iman telling only something. Figure it out. Yeah? I'm not just talking to Tobago folks here. All they do, all they had to do already. As you saw, so Fed's in Trinidad that he's trying to convince for this local, upcoming local government election, because that's where he's setting his sights first. I make no mistake about it. Was New really isn't interested in winning any seats. I mean, if he win it, it's a, a flip for him. Hmm. But it's really to upset the PNM. Yep. To take away votes from the PNM. And it's not a case to say he's taking away votes from people to vote UNC. Votes that would have gone to the PNM that is likely to may go to his party could cost the PNM the seat simply because the UNC supporters not supporting anybody but the UNC. Even though it was simply you and Shagwana and what the hand out loads of love. Look at, and, and I don't like to go down the race road, eh? but look at the ethnicity of the people that he's going to to share his loaves of love. Right? Look at it. We have some videos. Take note of that. They're very instructive. Right? But I will I will leave it there. Good morning to Mr. Leave it there. I think Mr. Leave it there would have traveled yesterday. So he should be in the continental USA. Yeah? Hmm. You should go ahead and open the line. I think it's 7 there it So guys, you can call us at 342-0081 and 466-5391. Oh. Those are the numbers to call. 342-0081 and 466-5391. Let's see who's out there. Caller, good morning. Hi, morning, Bruce. Morning, Dominic. Morning, Jen. Dominic, be safe out there, Bruce. You'll be safe, too. Mm -hmm. I heard Dominic say, and morning to all the callers and listeners on I-21.9, Mr. Chance, Mother Tanapuna, Zina, Manu, everybody, they live so long. Um, I heard Dominic say that the Chief Secretary of Tobago, Pali, Augustine, or Chavez, would have said that um, Kevin Morris is not in his class, and Dominic say, what class is in. I want to tell you, anybody who joined with Watson Solomon joke, they already said that they have no class. So he starts off classless. It's not the, being the chief secretary now that you could see it. Anybody joined with Watson Solomon joke after all the information out there that they get from members of PSA, and not only that, concrete evidence. There were evidence out there that you could see, had copy that you could read, and join with Watson joke. They had no class. Second, you see the four germs who parade in as PS, um, presidents of the different unions, then four germs, the backdoor president of PSA, I ain't calling them no mister, and he said Lambert and, and Roger. You all need to step aside the new people with new ideas, young people, not necessarily in age, but have young creative ideas to take over all the union and carry to the next level. All this that are germs, all the infected, and they start to get antibiotics, you have to get Watching all you alone, you just feel like you're coming down with something. Like how the press, it's all you just sick, Mr. Anisette. Oh, God, here, you so because good manners are going with the Mr. Roger, you standing up now to give Kamala Pesal this letter, let her know confidence. It had nobody else in the UNC could have given that. After all what you say about that woman, I was saying all these dogs that are changing mind, all these germs. All you need antibiotics, we need something to be able to you. And just for the government, if you all deciding that all you're not going to go back with the case with Isha and Steve and them, whatever it is, and these people, these individuals could sue the government and get money, give me my money out of it first. Give me back all my money to when all you, they sue all you, my money, not a part of that. I willing if all you take it to court, I willing to put a hundred dollars every month towards the, the case. Don't drop this case and have these people to come out to sue back and get money. Mm -mm. Give me my money first. Give me all my money out of that first and then all they could do all they want. I say, take it straight to the court. The next 20 years, because look at man just recently, war crime. He's 101 years old. They try him and he had to make five years in jail. He have a stick. 101 years old. They go the distance with he and die for the, what happened with the Holocaust and all that. So who is the Sean Steve and them? You all have a blessed day. Bye, everybody. Hello, good morning. Morning, Dominic. Morning, um, morning, Bruce. Morning, Dominic. Morning, morning. Yeah, um, Dominic, I uh, heard you say something. Um, I was listening to another program yesterday, and concerning um, the guy you say went across on the, I think it's on, in Port of Saint, to talk to the vegan channel and tell them about the, he just leaves people then to tell them about the storm yeah. coming on the government. I understand mm -hmm. that. He just shut up on that scene, you know, because they say he went to one of the 
you person. I'm the person tell him, hey, I choose to be here. I choose to be here. What are you telling me about? I know you, you know. Don't come with them kind of political thing on me. I choose to be here. Right? right? Then you run over the road now to meet somebody here because you feel shame. The person tell him, the lady tell him, yeah, that's not. I know come from work. I look into the hospital, go, oh, me and where you coming with him. So you feel that kind of way, then you understand? They say, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they say they shit them up with that stupidness because you ain't going all about with stupidness. It's a whole pan of them. We have some according to you, the money. Our literacy rate must be real. Our, our literacy rate has to be low. The kind of thing I see and hear, I don't know, I don't know. We in trouble. I only go to every really. We in real trouble because people have lost a sense of reasoning, understanding, and falling for people who who preach nonsense like the Ansel Rouges, the Watson Duke, the Kamala Prasad, the Sessa, the Fali. Yeah, we really in trouble because I can't understand how, well, good Pastor Bubu play back some people to Ansel Roger back in the 2014. Don't it? If them thing play, it should just play hard in this whole country to hear we he rose here at the time he given the letter. He ain't just, that man condemned, how he calls she? The mother of all, you know, you have a word that you use when I was teaching them just saying and call she, uh, I forget the word, but I'll go back to, I'll get it sometime. But let me tell you, these fellas are, eat their own vomit. <laughs> just because you must be have something against the fellow. You want to sell this country short to bring back the same people? <laughs> Be in trouble. And here are some little black boy who are no sense, talking nonsense. It's about one who does use that voice note, talking about how Roger do that with business in the past to bring the PNM and the PNM and all them kind of stupidness. I would say, we have some problem. We have some problem. We have to work, have to work on some of them, but we have problem. We have problem. I want to say, Thank you for allowing me this contribution. But we have problem, And it's hard to deal with. Too much I to in the schools. Hmm. Thank you, Kola. Kola, good morning. I lost it. Call me back. Kola, good morning. Good morning to you, Bruce. Morning, morning. And to Dominic. Hi, Carol. Hello. Yes. Dominic. Dominic, Morning, I've been listening to you and um, to Bruce. Dominic, besides having a brilliant mind, you're very witty, boy. <laughs> you're very witty. <laughs> you. <laughs> and can I take the liberty of saying this and what I heard two weeks ago at a particular place that you have been schooled by your sis? So Dominic? What's that, Kara? I said, can I take the liberty when I hear how witty you are that you have been schooled by your sis? <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to generate a smile from your laugh and things. But you know, based on what the last gentleman said, or what we, I don't know if it is the education system has failed us or if it is bad parenting skills. Our illiteracy rate Boy, based on what you can see and hear, it's high, you know. It's really, really in, 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 a, in a mess. We have some good work to do. A lot of people drop out of school, and, and some people in the political arena taking advantage of that. I listened to the minority leader in the THA. Boy, he was waxing warm. He was excellent. And he spoke about... Over 200 people were fired from the theatre. And I don't think, I don't know, I don't even know if they got any money and so on. And, and Mr. Farley coming to play like he's a godfather, you're finding money for 600 people to pay for grants. And you're also giving the maxi people, 62 maxi drivers, so much of money, and no money for the people from the theatre over 200 who got no money. Where's the equity in that? Where, what, what is all of that? You're supposed to go and rule and, and, and be a chief secretary for all. Not 
not for your party people only, but for all. You're all citizens of, of Tobago and Trinidad. Treat them equally. Right, um, Judge um, Bruce and, and, and Dominic Boy, mm-hmm. there are plenty of work to do on the illiteracy. It's it, 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 it high in numbers. It's really high. And, it, and it's sad. It's sad. And you know what? And I got you brought up the thing with Jesus. What Jesus told Satan when he came with bread. He said, man, don't live by bread alone. So when people, when then Mr. Duke come around my house, giving out bread, say, hey, man, don't live by bread alone. But everything that comes out, out of the mouth and out of the heart, man, don't live by bread alone. That's what we're supposed to be telling him. Well, any time they come in front of my door, that is exactly what I'll be telling them. Man, don't live by bread alone. Thank you, guys. Blessings. Thank you. Three four two zero zero eight one four six six five three nine one. Caller, good morning. Uncle Bruce, good morning again. Morning. Uh, Uncle Dominic, you know, uh, I just read something on the Facebook where I was going to say that it's not that alone, you know. Last week, Friday, in uh, the cultural complex that Joe Fari and all were preaching uh, during the election, that the building... Uh, that Mr. London, the building, how it uh, damage, it falling down, it, the sea and this and all sorts of bacchanal. Would you believe that all the secretaries went to that building last week Friday and was giving out $9.7 million to 600 families? And mm-hmm. actually, do the math, 600 families getting $9.7 million. Tell me how much they're giving each family here. And let me tell you, some of the grants is 20,000, 15,000, and some must be 50,000, and all these sorts of things. And they're saying that PNM keep out all the money and this and that. So I don't know if Uncle Dominic didn't know, but that one big bacchanal, and they had music, DJ, uh, with them section jumping up bacchanal. You see the commercial down there, man, and mm. real nepotism real uh, vindication, you know, victimizing people. They, well, I doubt any PNM people. All them P- 600 people down there are PDP people. If you see Bacchanal down there, you know, all sorts of wrong things they're doing. And Mr. Fari and them said that they were not going to discriminate against Tobagonians. They're just doing a whole bunch of rubbish here in Tobago. But I'm really, really sorry for the people in Tobago, you know, because I realize that they don't have eyes to see. Let them continue to jump up and behave stupid, and they're going to see it down the road. 21 years, PNM did nothing. But that cultural complex, I know, in, in Mr. London tenure, it was built. The Boko complex, already having all the parties, I know all these things were done under Mr. London's tenure and no chief secretary before him. So let them go right ahead and do whatever they want to do. They're going to see it, as my mother used to say, in the breakfast pan. I'm gone. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Caller, good morning. Morning, Dominic. Morning, boys. Morning, morning. Morning. Dominic, I hear you talk about school and snowball this morning. You know who is cool and snowball? No. <laughs> and when it? Uh, I, I might have an idea. You, you know who is cool and snowball? No. If you, if you listen, or do, if you read that article on the, on the papers, you, are you, I think you read the headline this morning, where the minority leader was um, in fact, he touched up his, his aggressiveness towards the central government. He the minority leader in his contribution, he, he classed them with um, animal farm. So, you know, you have Squila, you know, one federation, no one succession, I want to be prime minister of Trinidad at the same time, and then you have Napoleon down in the middle. Hmm. So, that is the animal farm. They don't know what they want. Hmm. And you are so correct. Squila cannot be in minority leader show. That should be for the for the key sec. You understand? I have so much 
questions to ask, but I'm waiting for Friday when you're back on our Friday to ask a lot of, lot of questions because I want to see where they have some of these people at the in grant for people who already got grants under the EMM administration for the meeting office. I'm hearing that they want to get money to small business people. These small business people already had money. So how much time you're going to give these one set of people money what you try to do? That is support because you realize your, pop, your popularity is waning. Is it that, that, that is it what you're trying to do with the money? I thought you said the THA had no money. Huh? You sent home over 250 people from the THA. Huh? And you're just squandering money? Up to now, we cannot get a report from Dubai. So what the hell is really going on? Hmm. I don't know. No. I, am, I am sorry for us here in Tobago. I am really sorry for us here in Tobago. And then you have the illiteracies as in the calls then who run it up and down behind these people. Some of them don't even have a job. Some of them don't even have a census, but they're running up and up and down behind and talking about the best thing since, since last year. I don't know, now. Nah. You all have to do it here. Too many dear. Take care. Thank you. So, guys, at this time, we get ready to go uh, for a break and come back. So, keep it locked. The Street 909 FM, this is your Titans of Democracy with Mr. Dominic Romain and Bruce Wayne. So, Keep it locked. We will be as, right as back. You, as and you, and that clip there, Bruce, on, on us. I'll take a look. It's up for when we come. All right, no problem. Cool. Yeah. Do you think? You don't 
For a safe and relaxed professional massage therapist and nutritionist? Look no further. Nature's Touch with Empress Judy and Associates offers a natural approach to better health. Treat yourself to a professional massage therapy and nutrition advice in a safe and relaxed atmosphere. Rejuvenate, Rejuvenate. your body, mind, and soul, and soul. at Nature's Touch Therapy. For an appointment, please call or WhatsApp 1-866-398-8282. Or visit our Facebook page. Remember, your health is our responsibility at Nature's Touch. Counselor for Monrepo Navet, Nigel Cotier presents Splash. Bubbles and Fold. Saturday, 9th July at Monrepo's Grounds from 10 a.m. Splash. Bubbles and Fold. Lots of prizes to be won. Look out for the Counselor's Cup Small Goal. Register now by calling the Counselor's Office at 610-2861. All teams must be registered. There is no registration fee. Splash. Bubbles and Fold. Saturday, 9th July, Monrepo Grounds from 10 a.m. The football starts at 10 a.m. and the fun events will start at 3 p.m. Join the winning team with Pastor Alkaline John every Monday from 10.05 a.m. to 11 a.m. and every Wednesday evening from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. live on the street 919 FM as he talks about La Vive, the power of five fruits, one of the most powerful antioxidant supplements on the market today. The five superfruits in La Vive are mangosteen, acai, pomegranate, gogi, and nuni. These fruits have a positive and profound impact on human health performance and disease. Listen to Pastor Alkaline John every Tuesday at 9.05 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. on the street 919 FM as he gives live testimonials of the Laviv healing powers. To get more information, you can contact Pastor Alkaline John at 516-286-7079, 516-286-7079. Seven zero seven nine, or you can visit his webpage at www.alkalinejohn.com. Good about that, but then I get real bad. Are you ready for that book experience again? The Sea Champion and the Embassy say, Book with us for that unforgettable boat ride experience. Sea Champion, leaving from King's Wharf, San Fernando, and the Embassy, leaving from Breakfast Shed, Port of Spain, or West Side Trinidad. For more information, call 399-5959-281-4723, or email us at coralvisiontt at gmail.com. Book now and reserve your cruise. And I'm both Turn your lights down low. And listen to the master's radio. Get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. You are invited to join Pastors Morris and Agnes Johnson of the Church of the Firstborn Assembly Miracle Center, located at number 399 Eastern Main Road, Guaico, in San Grande, for the old time gospel hour family radio ministry every sunday from 1 p.m to 6 p.m check out the children's hour worship ministry of the word and the family forum every tuesday from 9 a.m to 10 a.m the law and you every friday evening from 9 a.m 
to 5 a.m. All Night Prayer Live on the Street 919 FM. Designed with you in mind. This program deals with today's issues from a biblical perspective. You will also be given the opportunity to call in and interact with us. Micah 6 8 says, He had showeth the O main and what doeth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Your financial support through the First Citizens Bank will be greatly appreciated. Account number 795222. In the name of the Church of the Firstborn Assembly. For further information, call 753 1133 or email us at church 668 hope at gmail.com. Share the line. Share the line. This tree 919 FM on Facebook and Instagram. Share the line. Iowa George on Instagram. Share the line. Iowa TV and Street Street TV on YouTube. Share the line. The Yo, Street 919 FM. Yo, this is right now you're listening to the Titans of Democracy. You don't know. Real talk. Real talk. So welcome back, welcome back on the inside. If you're just joining us, you're locked on to the Street 909 FM. Just a bit of quick information for you. Yes, Brown Ice Promotion presents the all-white affair cooler cruise on Sunday, the 3rd of July, 2022, on board the luxurious Embassy Yacht, boarding by the Port of Spain waterfront in on Rison Road at 2 p.m. and sailing at 3 p.m. Music by Sensational Sami Dr. Ross and guest DJ Selector Mafia. Advanced tickets cost $200. Pay more at the door. For more info and tickets, contact Romeo at 7489335 or Sweet Vanilla at 7937425. Remember, no oversized coolers, no glass bottles allowed. For all your hardware building materials, auto parts, small tool rentals, pets and pet supplies, gravel and sand, now available, don't forget, Power Master, Optima, Vata and Megastar batteries starting from $488. It's all at Johnny Q, number 15 R.P. Avenue, Woodbrook, and our new Johnny Q Superstore in Lowlands Mall, Tobago, off Claude Noel Highway. Just call 63 Tools. Join Pastor Kelvin, Harry, Narayan and friends for the Way, the Truth, the Life radio program, Radio Ministry, a Church of Life ministry live on the street, 909 FM every Sunday from 6.05 p.m. to 7 p.m. For further information, you can contact 686-3845 or 349-5178 or 342-7303. Tune into the street, 909 FM every Thursday from 10.05 a.m. to 10.20 a.m. for the program Straight and Narrow, The Way of Life. The health store being brought to you by Mrs. Arlene Collins Muhammad. For more information, check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Straight and Narrow or visit our website at www.opulence.com slash Arlene for Life. You can also call or WhatsApp us at 309-4697 or 620-9379. Yes, Dominic. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So I have the um, I have the clip. Just a it's gonna get away from work at all, my lord. Hey, uh. <sighs> sorry. There were too many hands. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so oh okay. All right. Okay, all right. Yes. Let me see. Nice. So go ahead and play the clip. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. I saw the Prime Minister cannot inaccurately 
ever again inaccurately say that all Tobago contributes is 200 and something million. Ever, ever. Moreover, Madam Presiding Officer, annual revenues collected in Tobago averaged 226 million or 226.4 million for the period 2015 to 2020 roughly 10 percent of tobago's actual allocation from the central government for that period right so who's bad prime minister inaccurately said that the contribution of the Turkey goes 200 and something million. A few moments later, <laughs> by the presiding officer, the contribution of the Turkey goes 200 and something. Yes, you realize the pause, right, Bruce? Right, but wait now. Wait now. Okay. <laughs> Did I just do that? Okay. For, for total foot and mouth syndrome, you know? Just play it one more time before the Yeah, food. yeah, gladly, gladly, <laughs> gladly. That deserves, that deserves an encore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I'm sure the Prime Minister cannot inaccurately, ever again, inaccurately say that all Tobago contributes is 200 and something million. Ever, ever. Mm. Moreover, Madam Presiding Officer, annual revenues collected in Tobago averaged 226 million or 226.4 million for the period 2015 to 2020, roughly 10% of Tobago's actual allocation from the central government for that period. Like wait that. Million has seen it. Nah, that can be right. It's supposed to be billion. Shocks. Mm. The ad make sure and add the point four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that make a big difference. That yeah. <laughs> make a big difference. Listen to me. You see when you feel you know and you don't want nobody teaching nothing. Because mm -hmm. you know everything, these things will happen. And it will continue to happen. Yes. Don't take no advice from nobody because you know, you know, you've been in this for how much donkey years, so you know. We're pausing for, you make it worse by pausing. Correct. <laughs> See the man, watch me. Oh, boy. Things that probably were true, probably by that time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Grom just open up and Solomon right now. Yeah. Something. I need, I need a distraction. Something. Watson, help me. Help me. <laughs> boy, boy, keep your head down. Yeah. He <laughs> 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 said, no, worry, nobody is listening. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nobody is listening. Nobody was listening? Is he? Mm. They catch you by Pali. Yeah, because they catch you. No, you're supposed to. You're supposed to read your things. So yes. It's supposed to read your things. All right. Because you know saying it cannot be said that yes. all the contribution is only. It cannot be said. Cannot be said. If few moments again. later. Ever again. And you want the person next to him. Never. Never. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, who said it? He ain't going to read it neither. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could never. All right. A few moments later. Who says it? Not, not Dr. Ron. Yeah. Out of thy own mouth, Fali. I wonder what size shoe here is. How that is? Hmm? Boy. How that shoe is? You just put your own foot in your mouth, boy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. He's going to be under some pressure. He's going to be so under some pressure after that. Yes. Yes. Some, yes. Some, some, <laughs> somebody, he and somebody going to fall out for that. Mm hmm. Yeah. He and somebody <laughs> going to fall out for that. What? Whoever is he? PNM person who did that, well done. That, we need more of that on social media. Right? That's what we need more. I've been asking, we need some of that. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. 
पाली भाई पाली मी मी बीन सपोर्टर आई वुड हैव बीन सो अशेम यस ब्रूस वॉक्स आउट Lord Father, I, guys, the lines open three four two zero zero eight one and four six six five three nine one. Let's see. Kola, good morning. Dominic, you are good to me this morning. Oh look at, oh look at Squilla making that bubble and with himself and throw ball on the ball in never never. <laughs> After you realize it's the same figure and he's no ball talk anything again. <laughs> oh god. Oh kill him. Oh. Oh he really kill him this morning. Don't make you copy that again for me. I ain't got a one at all. I ain't got a one yet. Then that's for me. Then that's for me. Oh later. Eh Why? I I I don't try. Hmm. Serious foot and mouth syndrome, no? <laughs> yeah. <but. laughs> That's a se- serious, serious, serious piece of foot and mouth. Back for the point four. So when they say, you say only five minutes, I say two hundred million, but it was it was two hundred twenty six point four. You divide that. Yeah. <laughs> Call a good morning. Yeah, morning, morning, Bruce and Dominic. Morning. <laughs> morning. So that that one, that one, they come good with that one. And um, because that is basically on facts, uh, actual events. The man said that, and he, he denied when the doctor and Doctor Oli said it because when Doctor Oli was telling us that he was on a sober mood and explaining people <clears throat> with the facts and the things, eh? don't make but imagine you and your boss imagine director sit down in a board meeting with the chairman and thing, eh? mm. and you get up and you make an error like that. I could see it, the chairman telling the managing director, "Get rid of that fella." Yeah, if we get fired instantly, you know. This is serious matters, you know. This man has shown his incompetence, you know. And again, we'll continue to see him stumbling and bumbling all over the place. It reminds mm-hmm. me of the on the on those posts that you're seeing now. They're asking for the um, the PP to leave the UNT mm-hmm. because yes. uh, some damn is that thing with the with the Shan Steve. But then the DPP, are they blaming the DPP for something that happened? First of all, Kamala Prasad the Sesan AG and then removed the team of lawyers who are successfully winning. Asian people mm-hmm. left, right, and center. And the first set of lawyers that they are they appointed lose, and the judge realizes, hey, or they make a real ABC mistake here. So upon a side of date to um, to call it for the appeal, the yes. judge told us, no, 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 we will try them here. And today we have that. So we deal with something started by Kamala Prasad Dissesa. She still they nobody never even asked her a question. She don't have to leave. She she got revoted um, back into the. Position as opposition leader, and leader of the UNC in 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 her own party, and she accounts for nothing. She thinks, but here, well, she coming back to be prime minister. She wants to be prime minister again. Eh? Mm-hmm. But only only asking for attorney general to leave the thing. And in the meantime, two decades of Asian Steve, we have to be dealing with these people and them who have to be, you know, who have to go to court to clear their names on 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 crimes committed against this country. All they feel the UNC easy. All they really feel the UNC easy. Thank you. Hmm. Eh, father. Three four two zero zero eight one four six six five three nine one. Guys. Hmm. Eh, father. Call a good morning. Bruce. Good yeah. morning. Good morning, sir. Dominic. Good morning. Morning, sir. How was your flight? But the cancel my flight. Oh shucks. <laughs> They're ready for me to leave yet. Ah, oh, okay, all right. They want me to keep all the company. <laughs> I know they miss me, or they want to say how oh, I ain't call for the morning yet. Well, 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 I figured you had jet lag. <laughs> hey, Dominic. Yes, sir. I have a question for you all. 
Uh-huh. For you all. Mm-hmm. My question is, from 2010 to 2015, how much people from the PNM, the UNC took and gave them big position in their government? How much? I will leave it there for now. I listen in. I will leave that one there for now. <sighs> Caller, good morning. Yes, good morning. I hardly hear any voice so grim. Hello? Yeah. Come here now. No boy, you're coming through. Hello. Yeah, you know? Go ahead, let me see. Right. Mr. Fahim, I want to make a point to check me. You hear him, Dominic? Yeah. You hear me? All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Sugar. What's the. I saw Ali Agustin. Mm-hmm. I was going to call him and, and tell me if he's a. Prime, he was a primary school teacher, a secondary school teacher, which he graduated from university because I know he knows no mathematics. He and what he did, knows no mathematics. And Mr. Vanas James, I think he has some um, posts in, in the um, assembly, in the finance department, if you was last year in here. Dominic, he has some uh, to begin to call in and, and verify if that is true. But one thing I want to say. They have no class. They have no class. Mm. And you see, as I say, they know no figures. Just check them out good. Check out the horns, Dominic. Thank you very much. Yes. Hmm. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello. I am Ashley, Bruce Wayne and, and, and Dominic. Morning. Morning. Morning, morning. morning. I am so sorry for, for the feedback. Right. Thanks for getting me again. Um, I don't know if you all had listened to Mr. Mitchell in Grenada who had lost uh, the election. He said that his opposition party would work with the government, right, to make a better Grenada. Imagine that, right? And that had me wondering, like, like uh, this is the only country where the opposition is only here to oppose, right? No. On the business with Ish and Ferguson, they make sure they put everything in place, and they never try them. They bring in thirty-four, and and they just make sure it died. But I'm glad, no, no, no. As Jenny had mentioned, I just hope that that our taxpayers mustn't pay nobody, no. No big money for for um, wrong charge. I want the DPP to fix that and start it all over again. Now I hope that this time it can take thirty years, right? Because you see, our what you do here? Well, I wouldn't say it's a joke, but I mean it is close to being a joke. All right, but I wouldn't say it's a joke. All right, and um, this 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 UNC party, most trendy Gwenians, we for, we do remember, but they see me, I do forget. If they add up all the all the wrong things that they did, it's plenty. Nobody cannot even count because when Rambachan was the minister of Works and the young Indian girl, I forget her name, who was under him, saw something ratchety going on up in the east with some big work. And she went to Kamala. Kamala gave it back to him. 
and they run her like a dog. Well, I don't know if they call that corruption. You know. But, and one more thing, I only hope people don't forget how she call us African slave names. That is a serious matter. Eh? And one more thing, brothers. If Dr. Rowley won a platform and he had called Cecilia a camel, hmm, all the media would have had it headline, all the people would have it headline. She called him a donkey? Something like a line, uh, 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 donkey, and that is under the carpet. It's so sad. Nobody, she would never apologize for that, but if, if he had said that the whole woman arms were asking to so apologize, have a nice morning, my friend. Watch your weather and reach home sleep. Thank you so much. Hmm. Thank you so much. Three four two zero zero eight one four six six five three nine one. Call it good morning. Morning, Bruce. Morning, morning Dominic. Oh. Morning. I was saying this would have been the last try. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, no. The boy, the fellow who told the minority leader that he's not in his class. All the minority leader was to ask him, "Show me a friend, and I will tell you who you are." And they look out and get his answer from that. Concerning the storm, all who criticize and say the government um, inform them too early and to tell them what to do and what not. You see, they can't take truth anymore. All they want, they want lies and propaganda. The government did the work as a responsible government to protect us from the storm. So we were able to know what to do. They are criticizing him for that, right? What they wanted, they want to say the government is responsible for them. So when the house roof blow off or the river take whatever it is, it, the government responsible, so he, they would have to give them back the money for whatever they lost and all of that. So concerning the COVID announcement, now sometime in Tobago section, they would say, well, okay, we have four persons died and or how many in hospital and they will say those in hospital say seven were vaccinated and two were not and all of that so but when the deaths come they will just say well they had three deaths and it's the first time i hear they said tobago has one death and they were fully vaccinated i figure they're sending an underlying message to people and they have to be careful who they're talking to because mm. everybody not stupid like them okay mm. and they could tell you something and you can read between the lines okay so i want some of them to know when they are saying and reporting things let them know who they are talking to not people like themselves okay then bye thank you mother hello good morning <laughs> Hello, good morning, gentlemen. Morning, morning. Okay, I just want to say Jenny was so right this morning there, but, um, you know, you know, fellas like, um, Rosie and the, uh, I would call them, you know, they, 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 yeah, he, and I studied the Corolla. What is his study to do? He tried to get a place for his health. Instead of begging relatives to come and stay by them, and when they're ready for you, they, they would call you or this kind of thing. I mean, try and get a place. That's what a man works his life for to get a comfortable place to live so nobody can't. He's only begging and lodging by relatives. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Morning, morning. Morning, Bruce. I mean, Mr. Dominic. Morning. 
Morning, morning. Uh, well, first I want to say to Mr. Augustine, he who knows and knows that he knows is wise. So stop going guessing and reading and all these kind of things. You know, and he knows that you know you are wise. Right? And putting into the decision yesterday, I wanted to ask a question. I'm putting it to Mr. Romain. Since it is not, it is a kind of what, what, how, how to put it over, it, it, it is not human, human like to try people after how much years, 20 something years, because they commit murder by pen. So I want to know if they will consider the people who commit murder otherwise waiting for 20 something years for the trial or who have been going through trial for 20 something years also, if they will consider that. That's a question to Dominic, where the DPP made his decision, if they will consider ruling on that too. Because because them, the fellas commit the crime by pen, murder by pen. So the other who commit murder otherwise, if they will get the same consideration. Yeah, Bruce, thank you. Yeah, man. Take care. Hmm. Oh, yes, father. Something to look into. Hmm. <laughs> Hey, hey, one more phone call. What's going on? Three four two zero zero eight one four six six five three nine one. Call a good morning. Hello, good morning, Dominic and Bruce Wayne. Good morning, my dear. How old are you dear today? We good, we good. I to myself. I want to speak about the Sidar people. Everywhere you go, where the celebrity jobs are. To get your medicine, they don't have it, come back next two weeks and all kind of thing. But anyhow, I had a good one in the health center, down El Chicuro, mm -hmm. next month. So I will inquire about what it is going on there. And the next thing they tell you, when you have to go to get your blood test, so the last year, they give me my appointment. Every time I go, they ain't doing no blood test. I don't know if it's Judy Pandonic or whatever it is. I will find out and I will come and tell Mr. Dial Singh on the station what it is going on with these people. He said the health center open work out. So I don't know what it is. I will find out and I will ask a question. Mm. Yeah, yeah, darling? Yes. And good morning to the Titan. Everybody, Sharon, Mommy Sauce, Shak Shak, Lady Mano, everybody say safe. Yeah? And you have to pray a lot. Because what happened to we day before yesterday, it was real, 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 real frightening. Yeah? But I pray, I pray, I pray, and I say, Father Lord, blow that in our next direction. So we please. You hear what I'm telling you, boy? Mm. When I hear the say it go in a next direction, I'll say, Lord, Father, you answer my prayer. You hear? So everybody pray, pray, and pray. Because we don't know what again coming. It ain't done yet. You hear? All right, Dominic and Bruce Wayne. Will you have a blessed day? Too, and everybody, yeah. good morning. And have a blessed day. Right? Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Uncle Bruce, me again. Yeah, man. Uh, you see, this is what I tell them to bigger people. How the chief secretary could tell the minority leader he do have class like him? What what class does Fari has? Hmm. What class he does he have? What is you because of his uh, charges that he has against his name? In order to get them to get into they, they say give Fali the chief secretary. Let he be the chief secretary. Fali teaching suicide secondary school. What class does he have, you know, better than Kelvon, a young man like him? What 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 class Kelvon married long, long time ago? You understand? Is Fali married just before he become or right after he become the chief secretary. 
So what class is he talking about? You see, this is the disrespect, you know, that they have. And I, I've, I've been hearing that all the secretaries, all the secretaries, very, very disrespectful and out of place to people, you know. And if they know that you're opposite to them, man, they talk to you like if, you know, you are the biggest dog on the street without an owner. And this is the behavior. As the chief secretary, this is what you want to tell your, your minority leaders, that no class. And, and uh, Uncle Dominic, Barnes James, is, uh, is not the brother, you know. Uh, when the brother say they have no relation, they have name, same name, but no relation. And Barnes not dealing with Fali again too much, it seems, because he didn't make a live saying somebody tell you something about Fali, who they, they make them vote for and whatever, whatever, and all they call him Fali and do all sorts of something going on, and Fali not answering. But Mr. Augustine, let me tell you something. Long live the king, but it's how long the king could live. You happen to get a position that you didn't even must be deserved. Behave yourself, this is little to Beiru. Little, little to Beiru. Behave yourself and do what is right and don't follow stupidness and follow your leader. Walking up and down and talking rubbish. You might not share the same thing that he shared. Or let be careful what you all are doing. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, morning. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing this morning? Good. I'm doing good. You're doing good? Yes, I'm going to school. You're going to school? Yes. All right, that's nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Good morning, My morning. granddaughter always <laughs> hear me listening because she says she wants to speak. <laughs> so what do you want to say? So I want to say good morning to Uncle Bruce and Uncle Dominic. It's okay. <laughs> so there she is saying it. Say good nice. morning. Say morning again. Morning. 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 Okay. God bless you. God bless you, you too. too. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. Bye. Take care. <laughs> Call a good morning. Morning, morning, Bruce. Morning, Dominic. Morning, sir. Yeah, man. What's up? And to the listeners, you see, you see why we had to watch remote. Hmm. When we on the radio <laughs> and be be tactful, you know, and yes. choose the words wise and make your uh, great, your subject great because they're listening. Sorry, okay, bro. Dominic, I just have a quick one for you, bro. Hmm. Um, I I talking in school here. Yeah. I find anything that we know, Doctor Rowley, right now, mm. or the government, I find he should get rid of it. Yes, Rowley. I right. find you should get rid of it. You can understand, regardless. So, you know, war office. I want to say good morning to Brother Faris Alwari at the same time. Right? Mm-hmm. I just want to say good morning to, 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 to Mr. Faris Alwari, the Honorable Minister. Yeah, back to what I was saying. Dr. Oli should get rid of what they looking like PNM. And uh, listen, it's about, this, it's about current issue that I can't digest really, you know. Dominic, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, Doctor, only if it's anything that we need, though, right? Get you with it, eh? Thank you very much. Cause we want to the Senate, and where the Senate from? You understand? Well, they tell again, like how we just do things now. Nah. I know how we just rule. You don't blunder like that. Have a nice day, Dominic. Thanks. I hope they catch my message. Yes, sir. Hmm. Well, good morning. Uh, Dominic and Bruce, morning. Morning, morning. morning Do you morning. remember the New Testament with, in front of Pilate? They say, who all you want? Who all you want? And uh, with a long voice, give me Barabbas. Well, they get Farley. I'm gone. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Father, well, yes. <laughs> Guys, call us up, although we're getting ready to leave in a bit. Call a good morning. I'll, I'll be very brief. 
I just wanted to make something clear. Mm. When I say good morning to Mr. Farris Alwari, he could run two, two, two ministries. He'd have ministers that could run two and three ministries because they're bright. They don't make stupid mistakes, right? Mm. Well, Paul Mimbert is one, and Miss Brother Farris Alwari is one. I just want to let her understand what I'm talking about, right? He get to me, he can run those. Boy, he get cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Caller, good morning. Good. Oui. Me again. I'm not even getting time to say hello to anybody else. <laughs> a man asked um, Dominic a question of how many people the UNC employ from the PNM between 2010 and 2015. I sure they didn't um, employ a man from Canada, Grenada, St. Vincent, Barbados. They employ a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. This is how PNM government works. You work, you use the people who belong to Trinidad and Tobago and if you didn't get the skill then you take from outside. So I don't know what you're talking, what you feel, they should not employ anybody from PNM, they should just people from UNC. Is that just saying these people that don't understand how people think? We are not stupid. Hmm. The people they employ they belong to here and the lands that they were going to work is be they belong to here to work the lands. Okay. Let them try and know what they're saying when you see they come here. You know. Let them know. The God has disturbed me. The way they think I'm thinking like them. You're no fool. Okay, then. Bye. Four two zero zero eight one four six six five three nine one. Call good morning. Good morning, Mr. Bruce. Hey, morning, my brother. And Mr. Hey. Dominic. Welcome. <laughs> good morning, TNT. <laughs> hey, Dominic. You remember that building where we were looking for down in the back of the bar area down where they said it's included, right? Yes, that we pay fifty three million in rent for sale. Yes. And we and we never find we never but no police are investigate that boy. Nah. But I have a next building I have a next building to rest on you, you know. Mm. A football bureau under that same UNC. They used to rent a double decker house on St. John Road, they head up below St. Benedict, you know. Eh. And we used to rent it up there, you know. Mm. But okay. we we don't know yeah. who rented for who used to go there. Mm. I read that in the papers, you know. Mm. And I want I want the media to find out that from 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 the from the leaders of that UNC party. Right. Yes. Who was who used to use that building to the head of St. John Road going up to Mount St. Benedict up there? Mm. Hi, hi, hi. I ain't forget it. Have a nice morning, fellas. Hey, man, bless. You too. Hello, good morning. Bruce. Morning. Dominic. Sir. Dominic. Yes, sir. Dr. Rowley, come and pick up a, a bag of reject from the UNC and give them big position in the government. Dominic, it's PNF people that is voting against Dr. Rowley. It's PNM people that is voting against Dr. Rowley. Look what happened in Tobago, Dominic. Mm -hmm. Look what happened in Tobago. 
the people say they don't want gypsy. Dr. Rowley was the first gypsy down the people to them in south. They lost the election. And then come to tell me, the enemy of my friend is my friend. And gypsy was talking about Dominic. He lost the East West Corridor, Dominic. The East West Corridor in the hands of the UNC. It's PNN, people voted against Dr. Rowley. Or they can't see that. I had to read and smell everything for all year. Dominic, I will leave it here. I'm like your boy getting vex, man. <laughs> can't get vex, man. Yeah, but I mean, you can't reference one one person, um, UNC person, and, and say that Dr. Early put a whole set of UNC rejects and, and so on. Um, I, I mean, Mr. Uh, Manning, who who leave it there, is very fond of, would have recruited several UNC persons when he was formulating the... Um, the Vision 2020 document. It wasn't just PNM people alone. You had the likes of Botiwari and and, and 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 some others as well who would have made a contribution to to that document. Um, you see, the, the, the PNM's philosophy is is different. We recognize that um, the the skill set that is needed to run the country is not doesn't only reside in the PNM, and and it ought not necessarily to. Um, hmm. reject this simply because of their political leanings. If they have a contribution to make as citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, then, and you can use their services and they are willing to offer same. There's nothing wrong with that. But the UNC way is because when, when Dr. Oli would approach, approach Botiwari and I think Basan Barat for, you know, for them to make a contribution to the economic recovery plan post-COVID, remember um, Botiwari, the UNC, I think Kamala and they had um, told him he can't do it. Right? No, yeah, your UNC. Nothing to help the PNM to do anything. It was just like when Basio Pandey, when Mr. Manning was Prime Minister, Pandey got up in the Parliament and said the UNC have the solution to crime. And Doctor and Mr. Manning um, invited him to sit down with him and let's discuss your your proposal and discuss your initiative so we could help the country. And Pandey got up and famously said, "It is not the job of the opposition to make the government look good. So why should I give you my idea so that you could implement it and you get?" Um, brownie points and you get votes I'll keep it on my interest let people continue to die let the crime rate continue to spiral and then we will articulate our, our policies in the coming election and when we win we will implement it so it was clearly it was never again the philosophy has continued within the UNC party first it's not about country first we say we have solutions to the crime situation that could help save the lives of citizens but we are not going to give it to the government so the government can implement no and save lives, right? This is about holding it to our chest until the time is right so that we can use it to convince the population to put us back in office. And Kamala Prasad be says to a little Hassan Bharat, country first, um, party first. And if you are about country first, go to hell. Hmm. Yeah? But so, all they saying, but this is who you all want to put back as prime minister, party first, really? So if it is you have a set of crooks in the party, which they do, and there is evidence that could, um, that could, Put them behind bars and make the party look bad. Well, hey, hush them out. Don't say nothing. Don't say anything. It's party first. We have to protect the party. So we know we have pedophiles and we know we have um, human traffickers and we know we have persons who run in prostitution rings and we know we have people who were fired from um, state enterprises from malfeasance. Hush them out. Don't talk about that. Mm, party first. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm, see who's out there. Kuala, good morning. Hey, morning, Bruce and Damne. Mm-hmm. All right, let me, let me first declare, I am no PNN, right? But I subscribe mm-hmm. to PNN because I do a lot of research on PNN and UNC and the other parties to know what they're all about before I go and stain my finger. But the screening committee is not the one who's in control of screening uh, candidates uh, or, mm-hmm. uh, or does the political leader has full control of this of the screening committee or general counsel. As far as I my research thing they should just go through general counsel. Now yes. the, the political leader may have a say that they may want somebody there and they'll look into it. Simply as when Patrick Manning decided to call an early election and the party was taken against it, he went before general counsel. But but the deal he made with general counsel to to, to 
to call the early election, he said that if he lose, he will step aside. And then mm-hmm. even leadership take the PNM thing. Eh? And general counsel agree to that. Now, as far as I understand, too, general counsel has no say in the in in governance. Eh? PNM general counsel and a PNM party in government and the cabinet, it, 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 there's, there's a separate a boundary between them. But if the party, the party is complaining about the the, the the political leader who wants to, he has plenty of time, but he's going to call an early snap election. He has to face the general council. You know, because it's not like a runner, one man show like Kamala Pasadi says, so she does what she wants, do what she wants, nobody can think. That's why it's very easy for her to win elections. She just has a regret. All she has to do is remove people who, who, who don't support her, like Vatsant and, and the others. And, and put us at a yes men and women around them. And when you do that, you you have, you, you you diminish your leadership. You don't have ideas. You don't have nothing. Is everything? Everybody look forward for what you have to say and what you're doing. It's not like a group of people come together with ideas and they dis- discuss it and they move forward. And the reason why UNC has a lot of rich um, mini- uh, past ministers and and the finances and thing between 2010 and 2015, and they rent in, they get kicked out of the place. They have no place to stay. They have no place that they can call their own. PNM has had a building for years. I bought a lot of the raffle tickets, you know, for the bands and all these things. And they're doing the business. They're fixing their home. They, they're moving forward. They're moving on from the old elaborated building and going to a state of the art 2022 or 2025 building. You, you know, so, you, you, that is a party with vision for me. So I don't know what Leave it there will be talking about that he's a PNM, but he probably them first and them done. They don't do research. They don't think for themselves. He just love Patrick Manning and that is it. So he hates Dr. Oli because Dr. Oli took over the reins from Patrick Manning and Patrick Manning gone and he just had at a banker and that, that is a problem for he. And I think the radio station is not the place for him to vent his finger. He should go and see a doctor. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Hi, morning, Bruce Dominic. Again, it's me. Hey, Jen. That color there hit the nail on the head when I think in terms of the union, you know. Same thing, you know. No, especially in the PSA. Well, they will not have a general council meeting at all and meet with the section representatives who will come and sit there and make them account for the money spending. That is what it is doing these organizations, especially when they want to remain there forever and ever no accountability so unc psa as it is run now owtu sw s whatever so some seamen or whatever workers and ujfw not to when you think about it it's the same kind of alignment and then when you look at the players involved they align also look at reading um lambert was a, a counselor for pnm and they go martin Lambert turn around and say that the PNM is the most brutal and hard to work with party when it comes to labor. These two parents, the watchman line is like second nature as roll off the tongue. One of the most abusive and brutal government ever had when it comes to labor was the NAR. NAR cut everything because of the IMF and all that. That's the most brutal. We lose the coal and everything. This government, PNM government, especially under Dr. Eric Williams, it started that way. When he went up to Marlboro House, our OWT president was there, Mr. Rojas. He took labor up there, too, to be a part of the formation of this country. He had them in government. He had them in certain places. PNM is the, 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 the only organization that works hand-in-hand with labor, and there's a history for that. But these fellas were the same genius. They want to say in office, they don't like democracy. The most democratic political party it have, they could say what they want, is the People's National Movement. They could say what they want. So that guy just brought that to my mind when I think about it. All of them operating just like the UNC. They stay in there forever. They only gain voted in right through. Nobody opposing them. And they're living on big salary. Nobody know what they're living on. They Nobody know how they're buying this. Not nothing. Everything shrouded in secrecy. That's why all of them want to be under the umbrella of UNC. Because apparently them operating just like the UNC party are gone. So, Dominic, I see our countdown has begun. We have just about two minutes again. 
Mm-hmm. So, guys, uh, it was a pleasure being in your company. It was a pleasure having you in ours. Out of time, not out of things to say. Uh, Dominic, any closing? Uh, well, what can I say? Enjoy the rest of your, um, your Thursday. I hope, I'm hoping I can be on or now. On Sunday, Sunday I won't be back yeah. in the country as yet. So okay. um, we'll play it by air for now. Um, All right. We'll see what I can do. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, folks. Hmm. We order here. As we say, mm. ciao. ciao. democracy. You don't know. Real talk. talk. What I'm saying, I'm speak of the truth and I'm not living true. What's on? Yo, 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 yo. Well, I'm not see the truth. That's a yes and I got yo. Well, again, them say, them speak of the truth. Them not live the truth. Them say, them know the truth and them don't know about the truth. Them speak of the truth. Them not live the truth. Find out to them a John Paul recruit Your brute your Them brute. speak of the truth Them not live the truth Them said them know the tree And them not know about the fruit Them speak of the truth Them not live the truth Because they said them a John Paul recruit And they use them was stoop In a day wrong vessel Me go catch them a scoop No pass of them a dupper No pass of them a dupe Well, me go tell them Self in the cup in a the truth No pass them Them go take the wrong route Well, me a sip Last time I no drink soup Well, I Again, them must see me couple loop. Well, I owe you, who you again? Them speak of the truth, them not live the truth. Set them know the tree and them not know about the fruit. Them speak of the truth, them not live the truth. The views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of the street. 919 FM. Trinidad, get ready for the grown folks affair. Sexy in white. Saturday, 2nd July. At Rock Band, the Anchorage Shagaramas. From 10 p.m. till 4 a.m. DJs, Clyde the Outlaw, Foreign Bass, and Ishmael the Demolition Man. Special guest artist, Colonel Roberts. Yeah, yeah, it's your boy Colonel Kit Roberts here. And it's all about sexy and white. July the 2nd at the Anchorage. I will be there with all my songs. And I even touching some of my father classics as well. Only medium coolers allowed. Get your tickets now at Crosby St. James, Seance Beer Garden, San Fernando. For tickets and more info, call 375-2257 or log on to www.freeupal.com. Sexy in Y, Saturday, 2nd July at Rockback, the Anchorage Shagaramas. Tune in to The Street 919 FM every Thursday from 10.05 a.m. to 10.20 a.m. for the program Straight and Narrow, The Way of Life, The Health Store, being brought to you by Mrs. Arlene Collins Mohammed. For more information, check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Straight and Narrow or visit our website at www.opulence.com slash Arlene for Life. You can also call or WhatsApp at 309 469 Seven or six two zero nine three seven nine. Hi, what's up TNT? This is Wayne Johnson out of Brooklyn, New York. I always wanted to do something back home. And we're going to be doing our gospel segment on Mondays from 10 p.m. to 12 midnight. That's 10 p.m. to 12 midnight on 91.9 FM. Listen what I want you to do. Spread the word. Spread the word TNT. Salvation full and free. 
Salvation is for everybody. Mondays from 10 p.m. to 12 midnight. That's 10 p.m. to 12 midnight on 91.9 FM. Good about that, but then I get real bad. Are you ready for that book experience again? The Sea Champion and the Embassy say book with us for that unforgettable boat ride experience. Sea Champion leaving from Kings Wharf, San Fernando and the Embassy leaving from Breakfast Shed, Port of Spain or Westside Trinidad. For more information, call 399-5959-281-4723 or email us at coralvisiontt at gmail.com. Book now and reserve your crew. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. found love, it came down, spread its arms on a tree, and in those arms I found compassion, love's restoration, my soul guarantee. are not necessarily the views of the management of the street 919 fm hi i'm valentine garcia and i'm nikki garcia please join us on the final hour broadcast every thursday at 9 a.m on the street 919 fm radio every week we will journey into the amazing word of god so please join us see you then all right turn on to beagle so we we're getting ready to hand you over to the final hour broadcast that is on every Thursday morning with Pastor Junior Valentine and his wife Nikki Valentine. And they do the final hour Bible study series every Thursday morning from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m. And I'm sure that this broadcast today is going to be very interesting and I urge you to Come on the live and share it with someone. All right. Come on the live and share it with someone who you believe would be um, edified and, and, and spiritually edified today. So we wait the presence of Pastor, Gast, uh, Pastor um, Valentine Jr. Hey. Right. There's Praise a, the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. I'm a lost for words, all kind of thing. I, I can't even stall anymore. <laughs> I heard you. I was like, okay, let me come on here. Come on. I got you. I got you covered. I got you. You gotta help my, you gotta have my back, man. <laughs> have your back. Don't worry. Have your back. Have your back. All right, good, morning. Good, morning. good morning. Good morning. I hand you over now to Pastor Junior Valentine and his wife, Nikki Valentine. Okay, all right. Praise the Lord. Good morning. I just want to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is good. Amen. God is good today. God is good every day. Well, before we get started, I want to just say a word of prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this new day. We thank you for another Thursday, Lord God, where we have the opportunity 
to be able to come on here and talk about you and to share your word, Lord. As we get started this morning, Lord, I pray that you open hearts and minds, Lord, to be able to understand scripture. I pray that you open our Lord, our, 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 our minds to be able to speak your word, Lord God. Use us this morning as your vessel, Lord God, to be able to touch the hearts of everyone listening this morning, but not just to touch their hearts, but also to be able to share with someone else, Lord God, for the betterment of your kingdom, Lord God. We thank you. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' almighty name, amen and amen. amen. Well, as you know, every week we choose a topic. Last week we were talking about our good and uh, how, it, how it was important for us to be able to be, be uh, kind and respectful and and be sharers and be givers, and I hope that as we, as we, as we, you know, as we did our, as we did our walk this past week, that we would try to implement those things. I hope that every Thursday that we come on here, that the things that we talk to you about, that you know, uh, living this life is a step by step process, you know, you know, process. And as you, you know, the saying goes, if you know better, then we do better. And the thing is that every day, no matter how old we are, we're, we're never too old to learn. And as we learn that we begin to make these changes so that one day uh, when we have to answer to our Heavenly Father, uh, we would be able to hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servants. You know, uh, I, I, I tell, you know, the kids uh, all of the time that, you know, once you know or somebody explains it to you or you're taught or you understand then you become accountable. So, you know, as we listen and as we share with you and, and you know, um, as we as we do this walk together, this thing called life, that we all grow, all right? So, again, last week we talked about our good, about being kind, which we should be anyway, about being respectful, about sharing and caring for others, not just ourselves or not just our family, but just everybody in the whole. Just, you know, our goal is to try to be the people that Jesus would be proud of. You know, to be the people that live like him and, you know, and operate like him. That's that's the ultimate goal. So today, our topic we're going to talk about is uh, tur- is uh, is the topic of turning around, turning around. And this topic today I want to share with you is because um, every week we come on here, we talk about, you know, various things, uh, you know, various topics. One week we talked about uh, obedience. We talked about understanding. We talked about foresight. We talked about um, work. We talked about uh, uh, you know a bunch of different topics, and they all have to relate to how we how we live this life and 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 trying to live the life according to um, the way that God has laid it out with His instructions and His commandments, and you know just just being the people that He wants us to be. So eventually, again, when we get to Him we can hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm-hmm. And at some point, um, we have to understand that we all make mistakes. We, we, we all are, you know, are born and we all have a sinful nature by default. And, um, but we have to be able to, to, to follow the direction of our Lord and Savior. And we have to start making decisions in where we, 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 we decide or, or, or we choose to one day be with Jesus in heaven. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we choose to be with him in heaven. So today our topic is turnaround. Turnaround is important because no matter where you are, we all have the option to turn around. You could be walking down a street that you have no business going down and you have the option to turn around. You could be living this life in a manner you should not be living but you have the option to turn around. We all have the option to turn around. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what we are doing, we all have, God has given us free will and we all have the option to stop and to turn around and make some changes um, in order to get back on the right road. Yes. I want to encourage you today that no matter where you are, that no matter what anyone else is saying, that no matter what has happened in the past, the choice to turn around is yours. Mm-hmm. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, the choice to turn around 
is yours. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you today. So today we are in a passage of scripture that I want to share with you, and then we're going to go from there. And I'm going to have Nikki to read this uh, passage of scripture, and then we'll kind of just uh, just work our way down verse from verse, you know, from there. Okay. Okay. So this is taken from Chronicle Second Chronicles, fifteen verse two. Well, we'll start with uh, verse one. Uh, then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Obadiah, and he went out to meet King Asa as he was returning from battle. Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. If you ab but if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Uh, it goes on to say, for a long time, Israel was, was without the true God, without a priest to teach them and without the law to instruct them. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out, they found him. So here we go with this passage of scripture this morning. And it tells us about King Asa. Right now, one of the things that we know about King Acer is, uh, uh, and, uh, and I believe we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, is that if you look through the Bible, we talked about you know about the word pleasing, mm -hmm. and as people um, in our lives, uh, we, we 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 all have somebody or someone or or, or some situations that we try to um, make people happy or, or or make others happy or whatever it is, and. Uh, you know, as we refer to it in the Bible, every time we see the word pleasing, it was always pleasing what was pleasing to God. I believe that as God's people, as people, that we have an obligation when we do things, we ought to first make sure that the things we are doing is firstly pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. We run around here sometimes and we're so busy trying to make other people happy. For some of us as parents, we're trying to please our kids. For some of us, we're trying to please our friends. For some of us, we're trying to please other people. And when we please other people, it takes away from us the ability to please God. The Bible says you can't have two masters. It's, right. a, it's impossible. You, you, know, you know, one of the things that I understand is that uh, you can't make everybody happy. However, we have an obligation to live a life where our life is pleasing firstly to God, our father, right? If you live a life where your life is pleasing to God, then you would find that things in your life would go so much better because you are pleasing the person who pleasing matters. Mm -hmm. Let's keep that in mind. Who pleasing matters. We talked about pleasing. Now in the Bible, when it talked about King Asa, King Asa was one of the people that was referred to, it says, and King and, and Asa did what was pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Asa did what was pleasing to the Lord. So here we see in, in, in the scripture that uh, King Asa was returning from battle. And on his return from battle, a, ba a, a, a battle that they had just won, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Ezariah. And he went out to King Asa when he was returning from this battle that he just won. And then Asa said, this is God speaking through Asa. He said, listen to me, Asa. He shouted, listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin, the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Mm -hmm. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Again, today we're talking about the turnaround, right? For so many of us, we run into situations in our life because we don't stay with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we talk about staying with someone. You know, um, there was a time I was talking to one of my friends and he was telling me, man, you know, I'm married to my wife and, you know, I just don't like the way that she's operating or she's treating me or she's doing certain things. Because what's the problem? You know, we're married. She, she, she's asking me for, for, for time and she's asking for this and asking for that. And, you know, one of the things that I had to explain to him was like, just because you're married, if you're never there, then that's the problem. You're never there. Just mm -hmm. being married is one thing, but you have to be in a relationship and a relationship requires 
time requires being present. And for so many of us, we say, well, hey, I'm a Christian. Or I hear people say all the time, my God, my God, my God, not even say, don't even pray, don't even read the Bible, but my God, my God, my God. And the thing is, is that for a lot of us, we say my God, but we're not with God. I say all the time in the Bible, you look in the Bible, you see where it says, and God was with David and God was with David and God was with David and God was with David. However, we ask ourselves, well, why was God always with David? And the answer is because David was always with God. David was always praying. David was always worshiping. David was always with God. And here it goes in this passage of scripture where when they're coming back from this battle, from this victory, the spirit of the Lord came on Ezariah and he said to the king, this is the same king who did what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord. He said to the king, the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. I want to encourage you today as we talk about the turnaround. Where is your stay? Are you always with the Lord? Are you always with the Lord? Are you always with the Lord? Where are you investing your time? We encourage again and again and again and again and again. You have to spend time in prayer. Prayer has to be a priority in your life. You have to spend time in your word. God's words has to be a priority in your life. We talk about putting God's putting God first. One of the things that I know is that whatever is a priority for you is what you put at first place in your heart. What are what is your main priority? Is it the Lord our God or is it everything else mm -hmm. that's going on around you? Is it everyone else that you have standing in front of you or is it our God? The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon, this is God saying to King Asa, after coming out of this victory, listen, you people of Judah and Benjamin, the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Some of us today, we ask the questions, well, why is these things happening to me? Why are these things going into my life? Well, have you been staying with the Lord? Have you been staying with the Lord? The scripture goes on to say that whenever you seek him, he will find you will find him, but if you abandon him, he will abandon you. So many of us today, we cry out, right? We cry out and we're like, you know, Lord, 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 whenever it's time of trouble, but where are you when things are okay? Do we abandon the Lord when things are good? And then whenever trouble comes out, we just say, hey, let me pick you up because I need you now. We have to be careful that we are not ditching God to the side when when we don't need him and then all of a sudden we need him then we use him just like a convenience you know one of the things that we see here in the scripture is that the spirit of the Lord came upon or came to King Asa when they were coming out of a victory when they were coming out of a victory God was with them and they won the battle and it says here that God spoke to them not when they were depressed not when they were sad, but when they were coming out of a victory. And one of the things that I want to share with you this morning is that you have to be careful. A lot of people think that when things are bad is when the enemy attacks you. But the enemy attacks you at two points in our walk. The enemy attacks you when you're in a trial, but he also attacks you when you're coming out of a triumph. Yes. The enemy always will come and attack you when you're going through trouble, but he will also come at you when you are coming out of a victory, when you're celebrating a victory. You know, one of the things, and I see this, we see this happen again and again, all the time we see this happen, where people are like, man, you know, everything is working out, everything is great. And when everything is great, when we just got a win, when we just had a victory, we feel like, you know, hey, we did it. We did that. We, you know, and we feel good about ourselves and our ego is up and, and, and we feel like, you know, hey, nothing can go wrong. And that's when the enemy comes like, yeah, see, you didn't even need God. You can do it 
all by yourself. You did this. God didn't do this. And we begin to feel ourselves. And that's when the enemy starts to plant that seed that, hey, you can do this alone. You don't need God. You and your friends could do this. You and somebody else could do this. It wasn't God. It was you. Think about it. You did it all yourself. Be careful of the voices in your head when you are winning, when things are going good in your life, when everything seems to be working out. Be careful of the voices that are in your head. We spoke about influence. Be careful about the voices and the things that you tell yourself when things are going good in your life. God had to remind King Asa when they came out of this victory, when they were celebrating that it wasn't you, it wasn't nothing that you did, but instead it was me. And just remember that yes, you won this victory, but remember mm -hmm. that as long as you stay with me, as long as you serve me, as long as you do what's right, I will always be with you. I want to encourage you today. We have to come to a place in our life where no matter what's going on in our life, no matter if it's a if, if it's a win, no matter if it's a loss, that the one thing that we never change is being close to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. No matter what's happening, like so many times I hear people say, you know, let's talk about the other side. So many times I hear people say, man, you know, nothing's going right. And, you know, this whole Christian thing, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this, man. I, 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 you know, I don't know, you know, God's supposed to be a good God. And, and, you know, why are things not working out for me? The enemy's like, well, why do you need God? If you go struggle, you might as well struggle by yourself. You might as well go live it up. You might as well go just do whatever you want to do and have a good time because this whole God thing ain't working for you. But here's the thing. God is good no matter what. My wife and I were talking the other day. I was like, you know, what, what we have to understand is there's a story in the Bible where Jesus laid his hands on the one guy that was crippled. And he was he was in his 40s. And, you know, people ask the question, well, you know, if God loves us so much, why was this guy crippled? And there was a, you know, Jesus replied that this was done. He was this way for a time, for this time, so I can show my greatness. And sometimes we don't understand why things are working out the way they are, why things may be going the way they are, right? But God knows and God understands, and it's all for his good. I just had a conversation with somebody else where I told him the other day, you know, we have to understand that we spoke about this. We spoke about foresight. The fact that we could only see what's right in front of us, but God is able to see the bigger picture. And sometimes we get in the way and we make it harder for God to do what he's going to do, or we delay what God is going to do because we're so busy getting in the way, trying to do it in our own self when we can only see such a short distance away. I want to encourage you today that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's happening in your world, whether it's good, whether it's bad, do not forget who our creator is. Do not forget who our provider is. Do not forget the person who no matter rain, no matter sunshine, has always and will always be there for us. So many people, they only they only love God when they're coming out of a storm. But the minute that they experience some sunshine, then they forget. The Bible says the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. No matter bad, no matter good, because everything works out for the good and we said this in the scripture everything always works out for the good of those who love the lord no matter what you know i tell young people today it's so easy for young people to just throw their parents just ditch their parents to the side it, it, it was never like that before but we're living in a world and, and second timothy talks about this we live in a time now where, where, where we live in this world where it's it's, 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 just, it's totally different nobody holds anything sacred you know um no one's listened to parents. There's, you know, there's no honor for parents. We live in a totally different time now. And it's because we, it's so easy for us just to, to ditch God. Yeah. Just to ditch God. I want to encourage you today. We're talking about turning around, mm -hmm. turning around. We have to take this opportunity. We have to take this while we still have time. Every day we hear Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. And trust and believe, just like in the day of, of, of Noah, Noah preached and he preached, the flood is coming. The flood is coming. And nobody listened. And then you know what happened? The flood showed up. 
I want to encourage you today, our Lord and Savior. If you look around, our Lord and Savior, Jesus is coming soon. It's time for us to ship up, to shape up, because something is going to happen soon. Jesus is coming soon. And now, if if any time more than ever, now is the time for us to follow what the Bible says. Stay with us. As long as you stay with the Lord, no matter what, no matter ups, no matter down, as long as you stay with the Lord, as long as you stay with the Lord, when you need God, God is going to be there for you. It's just like us as human beings. You know, you have friends and the only time they come around is whenever you have something to give. But when when you have nothing to give and a time of need, then you can't find no one to help you. That's not the way that God intended for us to carry him. That's not the way that God intended for us to carry him. Well, I agree. God asks us to trust him in all things. So it says in uh, Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lead not into your own understanding. And so even though things in your life, in good and in bad, mm -hmm. um, it's not, you, you don't know what tomorrow is. God says, well, I know the plans that I have for you. He knows what every situation that we're going through is always to work out for the good of the kingdom and the good of you who are called according to his purpose. Not our purpose for ourselves, but God's purpose in his kingdom. So as we are going through this life, um, we should be maturing. We should be fully growing. And one of the things that it says in Jeremiah 29 and 12 is, when you call upon me and go and pray to me, I will be listening to you. Um, he hears our prayers. He knows the desires of our heart. And so you don't have to go out and seek it. You don't have to go out and try to figure out how to make this life work for you. You just have to have faith in God that, everything that he's doing is working out for your good and then we'll have those testimonies like we've always heard when i look back over my life and i think things over even when it seemed like i was at my lowest period god brought me out and he set me out set me above where i was before but that's just like the story of the potter mm -hmm. sometimes we have to go through the fire in order to come out beautiful mm -hmm. and a lot of us don't want to go through the fire we only want the praise so again, as we say, we're here, we're talking about turnaround. And you know, as we talk about turnaround, if we go down a little bit further in the scripture, it says, so after it says here, I'm going to repeat this one last time. It says, the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. It goes on to say, whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. And we've seen this again and again over in the Bible in the Old Testament where we see, you know, uh, they would win. They would have success, and then they would have a moment of peace. And in that moment of peace, what happens next is they would get absent-minded. And all of a sudden, we would see idols, and we would see them doing crazy yeah, stuff. And then they'll revert back to, you know, to doing things. They'll forget about God. And then they have to go through trouble in order to come back to where they want to be. And then they'll do it again. And, and you know, as Solomon says, uh, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. it, you know, everything just repeats itself. Mm -hmm. and, and here we are in a place and a time where I feel like, you know, history is repeating itself. Where it's like, yo, you know, when things are good, when things are nice, and everybody's like, yo, everybody just get absent-minded. And But we have to come to a place where we, under, where we, where we begin to understand that, hey, you know, uh, uh, there's a saying that says prevention is better than cure. There's some things in our life that we don't even have to experience if we would just follow the instructions prevention is better than cure. A lot of us, we don't even have to get burned the way we get burned. If we would just listen, we talk, we talk about obedience. Obedience brings life, blessing, and prosperity. If we would just be obedient to God's word, if we would just do what God is asking us to do, if we would just trust him, if we would just stay with him, we would be okay. Does that mean that we wouldn't go through some stuff? The Bible says, uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Does it mean that no weapons will be formed it just, but it tells us that they won't prosper, that no matter what we go through, we will always come out victorious. But in order to experience that, we have to be able to do what God says. We have to be obedient. It's, it's funny. When you were speaking, I got a vision of when uh, oftentimes we have to put stuff together. 
and we'll get a box and the box has an instruction manual in the box of whatever we're putting together a piece of furniture um uh, how, anything that we're putting together it comes a bicycle anything it comes with an instruction manual and a lot of times we'll look at the instruction manual and put it to the side and be like i got this i know i know what i'm doing and then we start to put pieces together and um it starts to look like we got it and then we get all the way to the end and we we have five 20 30 pieces still left over and it's like oh goodness i missed something it's not going to work right mm -hmm. it's not going to turn on it's not going to so you have to go back and start to go back, open up the instruction manual and say okay what did i do wrong and sometimes we can stop the extra we don't have to go and do it again if we just stop read the instruction manual first make sure we have all the pieces that we're supposed to and then start to put together the puzzle um or the or the piece or whatever it is that we're doing and what we have to do is in this change in this turnaround is stop just doing things on our own mm -hmm. we have to start to go into our instruction manual pray meditate talk to god ask him what is my next step what's my next step that's right and follow the instructions and follow the instructions so now King Acer got this message from God, and it goes on to say in verse 3, For a long time Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach them, and without the law to instruct them. Mm -hmm. But whenever they were in trouble, they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out. They found him. Here we are, story of, story of the life of a lot of us, Right? Whenever things are good, we don't need no God. Whenever things are good, we don't need to go to church. Whenever things are good, we don't have to pray as much. Whenever things are good, we don't have to fast. Whenever things are good, we don't have to read our Bible. But the minute trouble shows up, here we are. Let's go sort God out. Let's go find God. It goes on to say in verse 5, during those, those dark times, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land, nation fought against nation, city against city, and God was troubling them with every kind of problem, right? Whenever you're not living right, whenever you're not living, uh, uh, whenever you, 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 you know, you're not with God, stuff shows up. If you think that stuff shows up when you're with God, then try it without God. Stuff shows up. It goes to say, but as for you, this is this is this is the the, the um this is the prophet speaking to Asa. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. Remember, Asa did what was pleasing in the sight of God. So everybody else was experiencing some stuff, but it says, "But as for you, be strong." This is them, God bringing them out of a battle victorious, right? You just had a win, and this message is coming. Hey, you just had your win, but remember, as long as you're with God, God will be with you. When you seek God, you will find Him, right? Everybody else is going through some stuff, but as for you, be strong, be courageous. It says be strong, meaning that things are going on, things are happening, but you just be strong. You be courageous. Don't worry about what everybody else is going on. Don't be all fearful. Don't be all scared. When things happen, a lot of us, you know, we tr we say we trust God. We say we have faith. We say we have, you know, we say we have belief. And the minute something happens, we are scared. We have no courage. It says, but, for you, but as for you, be strong. Don't matter what's going on around you. Be courageous for your work will be rewarded. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the next part. We're talking about turnaround today. Acer heard what God said. Acer heard the message that God said. And then here's what it says in verse 8. Eight, verse eight. When Acer heard this message from Azariah the prophet, he took courage and removed all the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns he had captured in, in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord which stood in the front in the front entry room of the Lord's temple. Then Asa called together all the people of Judah and Benjamin, along with the people of Ephraim. And then it says, uh, it says, for many of many from Israel had moved from Judah during Asa's reign when they saw that the Lord their God was with him. Now, 
listen to this right here. It says, when Asa heard the message, he immediately took action. Mm -hmm. When Asa heard the message from Ezra the prophet, he immediately took action. It says, he, it says he took courage and removed all of the detestable idols. Meaning, even though he he was the king and he was doing what was pleasing to, <laughs> to God, immediately he got courage. I, he wasn't concerned about making anybody happy. Mm -hmm. He wasn't concerned about pleasing anybody else. God just gave me a word. And what God said, I am about to move. It said, be strong and courageous for your work will be for your work will be rewarded and immediately he, he he went into action how many of us today when god speaks a word into our life we immediately go into action mm -hmm. how many of us god is telling us to do something get out of that relationship change the way you're doing turn away from your wicked ways Stop doing the things that you shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. Stop doing the things that are not pleasing in my eyes. And we're immediately willing to take action and do what it is that God is asking for us to do. It said, Asa immediately got courage, removed all of the idols, removed all of the things that wasn't pleasing to God. It said, and he went and he repaired the altar of the Lord that stood in, in front of the entry of the Lord's temple. Asa immediately went into action. I want to go back and just touch on that courage thing. Um, courage sometimes is you have, these are the people who Asa have been uh, over for years. He was the king. And it would, may not have been popular opinion for him to go in and remove the idols. Mm -hmm. Just like in your life, it may not be popular. If you've been going to the same um with a uh, bar, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. bar, bar, you've been going to the same bar or uh, with your friends, and you've been hanging with the same people for the past ten years, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you like, okay, I'm gonna live for for Christ, and you you always you've always had a potty mouth, and you've always been this person, and then all of a sudden you get a calling from God, and He says, hey, stop this, stop these detestable things. Sometimes it takes a lot of courage to come out of that because you're still these same people are still here mm -hmm. and it's hard to to be the change mm -hmm. it's hard to be the change in your world but you somebody you've got to be the one to have the courage to do it that's right and it, and, it, and it says here it says but as for you be strong and courageous and some of us come on we have to come to a point in our life where we get where we where we we become strong and we get some courage to be able to, to make some decisions, to make some changes in our life. A lot of us, we, we compromise. We talk about that word a whole lot. We compromise our homes. We compromise our lives. We're compromising situations because, you know, we're, we're too busy worried about, well, this person wouldn't like me or, well, what about this relationship or what about this situation? And we're, we're making all of these compromises that go against what may make us popular, what somebody else may like, uh, you know, what somebody else may think, when we have to understand our obligation is to do what is pleasing to God first before we're, we're concerned about what is pleasing to anybody else. And here we see King Asa, who was the king, saying, hey, look, it may not be popular. It may not be the popular move. People may not like me. People, uh, you know, may, 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 may talk bad about me. But guess what? This is what God has asked me to do, and I'm going to have the courage, and I'm going to do what it is that God is asking of me to do. Now, here's one of the things. Asa took courage, and it says here that, um, you know, back in those days when when, when after, after King Solomon, uh, Israel was split. So we had uh, Judah and Benjamin, and then we had Israel, and, it was, and, and, and Israel had its own king. Well, and here we see that when Asa, you know, took the steps, got the courage, and did what God had, was asking him to do, it said immediately he took he, he got rid of all the bad things, all the things that was displeasing to God. And I want to encourage you today as we talk about turnaround, it's time for us to clean our lives up, to take action, to have courage. And everything in our life, sometimes it may be friends, Sometimes it may very well even be family, but it's time for us to take 
courage and take that step in the direction that God has asked us to go to clean our life. Clear everything out of your life that is affecting your relationship with God. Clear everything out of your life that is making it impossible for you to do or live a life that is pleasing to God. That's the first step. The first step is to clear some things out of your life, to clear the things out of your life that's making it hard for you to serve God the way that you ought to be serving God. Next step, he said, he repaired, he repaired the temple. He repaired the altar. The altar is where they went to, where they made sacrifices to God. Repair your relationship with mm -hmm. God, your prayer life, your Bible study life, mm -hmm. your worship. Mm -hmm. Repair your relationship with the Lord. Some of us, we are so concerned about the relationship with everybody else, and we're not concerned about our relationship with the one who matters. A lot of times we consume ourselves and we tell ourselves, oh, well, you know, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time to repair my relationship or to there are days when um at one point you wake up and you're you you're in such a rush you're rushed to get to work and get the kids to school and you do this but you don't have the time to, to put pray in. you don't have time to read the word you don't have time to uh talk to god you don't have that you don't have the time to dedicate to god and but we do have time to go on our social media. We do have time to chit chat with our friends. We do have time to do other things because we are not allocating that relate time to formulate a genuine relationship with God. David had a genuine relationship with God. Um, and let's, let's be clear. David's life was not all bad. It was not a bed of roses. You know, he was, there were, People were killing, uh, looking to kill him. He was outcasted. He was running for his life for many years. Um, but God was always, but God with, was always, always with him. him. And at every point, God, David was praying to God, oh. hey, I need you to fight this battle for me. Hey, are you with me? Be my strength. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I will fear, fear no evil. evil. There was so much going around David, but at no point did David leave God. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. We have to make time for to build our spiritual relationship with God so that we can do his will. So again, we're talking about turnaround today. So we see here Asa got the word. First thing, clear out all clear out all the things that are affecting mm -hmm. your relationship with God, your walk with God. Clear all the things. And sometimes we can't take a step forward because we have so many things in our life that is constantly holding us back, clear the things out, and then start the repair process. The repair process. Starting your walk. Starting the correct walk with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, the scripture goes on to say here. It, it, what does that mean? What's that? You start the walk. You start the repair process. First, you have to repent of your sins. Mm -hmm. And second, in my opinion, after you ask God for forgiveness, mm -hmm. you have to forgive yourself. For whatever those sins are, so that you're not continuing to carry those things. Let go, because it says, you know, hey, uh, 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 when we come, when we come to God. Listen, it's like starting over new. It's like in the fresh start. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us, we need a fresh start. For a lot, mm -hmm. for a lot of us, we feel, hey, wait, I got baggage. I got this situation. I got that situation. Hey, guess what? The Bible says, whenever a sinner comes and repents and comes to God, the angels in heaven. They rejoice. rejoice. And for those of you who are serving the law and you feel like you've messed up, like you've made mistakes, like, you know, things have happened, this is for you too. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what? You too can turn around. You too can say, hey, I want to get back to the place that I was when I first met Jesus, right. when I was in love with him. Mm -hmm. I want to get back to that place. Sometimes, even though we're saved, we, you know, we get so bogged down with all the stuff going on around us, the people, the world, and everything going on. We get consumed with all of the things going on. And we got to come back to a place where, you know what? Where, hey, I love the Lord and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Let me tell you something. When you trust in God, when you believe in God, when you follow his word, there's a different life you get to experience. It is. It's a peaceful life. There's a different life. you. And if you want to experience that different life, we got to turn around and come back to that place. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you give God a try. Mm -hmm. Give God a try. It goes on to say in the scripture, it says, then Acer 
right? After he 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 cleared out the stuff that that, that was not pleasing to God, after he, he repaired the altar, it goes on to say that then he called together all the people of Judah and Benjamin, along with the people of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who had settled among them, for many from Israel had moved to Judah during Asa's reign when they saw that God was with him. Listen to that. Let me tell you something. When you turn your life around, mm -hmm. some of the people feel like, hey, you know what? Um, going out and witnessing to people, um, man, that's so hard, and I don't know what to say, and I don't know what to what to do. And, and you know, I know they say the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Let me tell you something. When you, when you are strong, mm -hmm. and when you show courage, and when you do what's pleasing to God, just by the way you live, just by the way you serve, just by the decisions you make, right? The Bible says here, and if you stay with God, God will always be with you. When people see God in your life, here's the thing. Back in those days in Israel, they weren't serving God. They weren't serving God. That king was doing some something totally different. But it says here, not everybody who was in Israel, not everybody didn't believe in God. And what they did was said that some of the people, when they saw that God was with King Asa, they left Israel and they came to where God was. For some of you, as we're talking about turning around, you're in situations or you're in places, in places where God isn't. And you sit there and you're comfortable, comfortable and you think it's okay. But sometimes you have to pick up you have to pack up and you have to go where you see God is moving. You have to go where God is because guess what? You can't sit there and woe is me and look at my situation and look at what's going on. Sometimes when you see God moving somewhere, you got to pick up and move. It says here that the people from Israel, even though things wasn't happening over there, even though the people wasn't serving God, even though people was doing things that was not pleased to God, hey, we see that God is moving over here. We're going to pack up. And we're going to move to where we see God is moving because I want to be where God is. Can't be comfortable. Can't be comfortable. Today, again, we're talking about the turnaround. Sometimes when you see things ain't, ain't working out, you see things ain't looking the way it's supposed to look, guess what? Sometimes it could be because of where you are. You're, you're somewhere you probably shouldn't be. And it's time for you to go where God is asking you to go or where God is so you could experience the goodness of God where he is. It said that some of the people, they was like, oh, uh-uh, we see that God is moving over there. So we're going to go over here where we see God moving because it looked it looked like, hey, during Asa's reign, it says, when they saw that God was with him, they left. It goes on to say in verse 10, the people gathered at Jerusalem in late spring during the 15th year of Asa's reign. And on that day, on that day, they sacrificed to the Lord 700 cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats from plunder they had taken from battle. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, their God, of their ancestors with all of their heart and all of their soul. Mm -hmm. Here we see God speaking a word. God speaking a word to Asa, somebody who was already doing what was pleasing to him. And then here we see where you know, we talk about the example. We talked about example, about being an example. We talk, you know, I had mentioned before, your life is a pulpit. People are watching you, especially when you say you're a Christian, especially when you say you're a follower of Christ. Can't be a follower of Christ, but you're out with a bad attitude, bad temper. We talk about being good. You know, hey, you're the nastiest person in your neighborhood. If somebody says something to you, you're ready to cuss and carry on. You don't behave the way a Christian should behave. You don't, you, you don't um, show godly, you know, characteristics. Got to be careful. So here we see in the scripture, God gives a word. God says, listen, if, as long as you're with me, I'm with you. When you call me, I'll be there for you. Then we see Asa making some changes, turning some stuff around. Hey, let's get all this stuff in. God is too good to us. For some of us, we have to remember, God has been too good to us yes. to forget God in our good times. God has been too good to us that because we're going through some trouble, to forget God because we're going through some trouble. God has been too good to us. So we see Asa making a change. Hey, let's get rid of all this stuff. This is what we're standing for. This is what we're standing for. We see him making a change. We see him making repair. And then we see now, hey, hey, they're walking in the right direction. Mm -hmm. They're beginning to walk in a different direction. Not just me. Uh, 
Joshua said, as for me and my household, for some of us, we're dads. For some of us, we're moms. And we're just like, well, hey, as, long as, I, as long as I do, no. As for me and everyone that I have influence over, as for me and my household, as for me and my children, as for me and my family, take a stand for Jesus. Mm -hmm. All that matters is that we're pleasing him first. It goes on to say, they made sacrifices, right? Then it goes on to say, then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. They didn't just do some things, but they made a commitment. How many of us today are willing to make a turnaround? And then when we turn around, we're willing to make a commitment mm -hmm. to God. God, listen, my past is my past. And I know I've done some things. God, I know I strayed to the side. But God, listen, I heard what you are saying. And I'm willing to make a commitment to you. And it says here, with all of their hearts mm -hmm. and their soul. So I just looked up the biblical meaning of covenant. And it is the binding or establishing of a relationship between a person and God. So much so that here's what verse 13 says. Mm -hmm. They made this commitment, right? They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, their God, of the, you know, the God of the ancestors with all their heart and soul. So much so, so much so that they turned around and what they said was, they agreed that anyone who refused to seek God, to seek the Lord, the God of Israel, will be put to death. They, they made this covenant, covenant, and they were so serious about this covenant. God has been so good to us. God is with us. God is moving. That they agreed that anyone who refused to seek the Lord, the God of Israel will be put to death. And listen to this, whether young or old, man or woman. How many of us today are compromising in our homes? We got kids running around doing whatever they want to do, living however they want to live. We got uh, 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 family members, friends doing whatever they want, and we do not stand for anything these people said listen we're making a covenant with god that not just us but if anyone associated with us benjamin judah anybody among us if you didn't serve the lord if you didn't serve the lord you were going to be put to death no matter young or old no matter where you were young or old man or woman and sometimes we have to take a stand in our life listen if you ain't serving the lord if you ain't about to do what god says you about to do if you ain't about to live right guess what sometimes we ought to take a stand i know we can't put people to death but sometimes we got to say hey if you ain't gonna serve the lord i can't be your friend i can't be in your company we have to take a stand in these last and evil days i love you but guess what hey if you ain't serving the lord if you ain't serving the Lord, if you ain't for the Lord, I don't want to be a part of what you got going on. I don't want to be, you, we have to take a stand. These people decided to turn around to make some changes. What changes are you deciding to make? You know, these are like, well, I don't want to sacrifice my relationship with, I mean, you know, I don't want to, we have all these excuses. I encourage you today. It's time for a turnaround. It's time for a change. We see people left from another place to come over there because they said, hey, God's over there. God's over there. Mm -hmm. God is a God of light, and light can't dwell in the dark. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we want to drag all of this darkness into the presence of God. Well, God, you know, you got to love me for who I am and what's going on in my life. No, no. God wants to change your life. God wants to change your life. Well in he life. don't want to come and be a part of the darkness in your life. He wants to change your life. It goes on to say, they shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blare, blaring and rams. And it says, so, so they were excited. Not only did they just, they just make the commitment and they didn't stand for it, but they were excited. Then it says, in, in, uh, all in Judah were happy about this covenant. The people were happy. Mm -hmm. hey, 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 guess what? Sometimes you take a stand. There's some folks that may not like it, but guess what? 
That's their problem. That's their problem. If Asa didn't have the courage to take the stand and worried about, well, you know, the people may not like me and I'm supposed to be the king and, you know, I do have to make the people happy and what if, you know, what if they... Uh, no, he took a stand and guess what? Sometimes when you take a stand for something that's right, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Folks Folks will be like, man, I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. But we're so scared about what everybody else thinks yeah. and what, 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 how somebody may feel. And guess what? Don't worry about pleasing people. Just worry about the Lord. Yeah. It says... Well, God will take the other uh, people who aren't supposed to be in your life and replace them. Even though Aitza's decision didn't make a lot of people happy, people moved to where he was to be in that. So it doesn't even matter if people like what you're doing. It goes on to say, all in Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all of their heart. Yeah. When you serve the Lord, and when you give him all of your heart, there's no ill feelings. They were happy about it because they went into this agreement with all their, not one foot in, well, I'm going to serve the Lord, but, you know, but, you know, this person or this situation or this or that, all in. God is asking for us to be all in, Mm -hmm. right? Then it says, they earnestly sought after God and they found him and the Lord gave them rest, from their enemies on every side. You want to experience happiness? You want to experience joy? You want to experience some peace? Serve the Lord with all your heart. Do what God is asking us to do. It says it. If you serve the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, guess what? There's some there's some things that come with that. There's some things that come with that. But if you don't, there's some consequences that come for not doing. And then let me go on. And I know the times right now. We got about 10 minutes here. But it goes on to say in verse 16, it says, King Asa even deposed his grandmother. His grandmother. His grandmother from her position as queen mother because she made an obscene astral pole. He cut down her obscene pole, broke it up, and burnt it. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. He didn't just say, I'm making this rule for y'all people. But... Remember what I said earlier? As for me and my house, his mother was queen mother. He took her down. He stripped her of her title. He stripped her of her title. Because it's like, listen, this stand that I'm taking, this standing doesn't just go for, for everybody else. It goes for me and, and my household and everybody else. I want to encourage you today as we talk about turning around. When you turn around, don't keep nobody around you to even make a give you a chance of going back in the other direction yes watch out for the inf- man why are you acting like that man come on man you, you know you want to drink you know you want to smoke man you know you want to lay down with this girl come on man like why are you acting like that man come on man you know that's that let them people have that have that man that's not for you when you make your turnaround when you make your turnaround when you give it all to god take a stand mm-hmm. take a stand take a stand Take a stand. I want to encourage you today as we're talking about turnaround. For some of us, God is saying today, listen, you turn around and I'll be with you. Mm -hmm. You turn around and I'll be with you. You stay with me and I'll always be with you. Mm -hmm. You stay with me and when you call me, I will be there. Mm -hmm. But understand, you run around, you're doing stuff, and you you know, you know only want to call me when you feel like you need me. I'm not the guy that you can just throw to the side and then pick me back up out of a dirty clothes basket whenever you know something's going on, you have nothing else to wear. That's not the God we serve. Mm-hmm. I want to encourage you today. It's time for us to make this turnaround. It's time for us to make this change. It's time for us to take action. Mm-hmm. It is time for us to take action. It is time for us to make this change. And this time, I'm going to call my... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say uh, that in Deuteronomy 3, 31 and 8, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. So do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. As you turn into your relationship with God and start to 
uh, move in the direction that God will have you move in. Don't worry about anything Don't else. Don't worry about anything else. God is with you. He will never leave you. He is right there. He's going before you. He's standing next to you, and he's covering your back. Go with God. He told King Asa, be strong, be strong. and courageous. Mm-hmm. And everything you do, those steps you take that are pleasing to me, you, you will, will be rewarded. rewarded. Mommy, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to thank God today for the word. You know, I stayed here and I listened. And I think this is one of the very best sermons I've heard so far. And I want to give God praise and thanks for you both. And just to re-emphasize what you said, and it happens in the best of Christians' lives, when things are going good with us, we forget God and we forget to pray. And the moment things begin to change and get bad, then we run to God. We're calling every pastor, every pastor, every preacher to pray for us. But this should not be so. Our relationship should be so tight, should be so intimate, intimate, that when God Almighty is with us, that we know he's with us, we know he's our father, we know he's our savior. He should be the first lover of our lives, that when we get into any situations, whether good or bad, he is always there. And... uh, I want to encourage those of you who are out there this morning that you will take your Christian life seriously as you heard this morning. I don't think it could have been put over any. They have said it all. They have said it all this morning. And even to those of us who are pastors, because sometimes as pastors, you could get caught up in the in the commotion of life and, and, and in every situation. I mean, a perfect example, perfect example is what happened two days ago. You know, and there is something on my on my cell that I have there as my profile that the, 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 the weatherman says that a storm is coming and everybody gets prepared. But the preacher keeps saying that Jesus Christ is coming and nobody cares. We saw it literally happening in our nation two days ago. I listened to the radio up to this morning and yesterday and everybody, oh, God is a Trini God. God is a Trini God. I, no. Jesus Christ is coming. And the same way everybody, you go to the grocery, not a candle, toilet paper. When we look on the grocery shelves, no water. Everybody just ran. It reminds me of two years ago with the COVID. Let us prepare for the coming of God. And it's to all of us who are Christians and those of you who are not Christians, serve Jesus Christ. I want to quickly lead you in the sinner's prayer. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning. I've heard the word. And Lord God, I know I am not in the place where you would have me to be. So help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. I give my life to you today. I repent of my sins and I will serve you, Lord. I make that oath this morning that I will serve you. And I give you thanks for accepting me as your child in Jesus' name. And to those of us who are saved, those of us who are saved, let us recommit our lives to the Lord. Father, this morning... I lift your people before you. And I ask, oh God, Father, that you're going to help us, oh God, to recommit. Recommit our lives to you, Lord God. And not only wait until situations come up in our lives, but recommit to you, Lord Father. And Lord, I thank you. I give you praise. Continue to bless your servant, bless his wife, their, their children. Father God, you keep them and cover them. Use them, Father. Continue to use them for your honor and for your glory. And Father, in the name of Jesus, that this broadcast would reach, Lord, millions around the world and on the internet and on the world wide web, Lord God, that as they hear your word, they would find encouragement from those great men and women of God of the Bible. And Father, Lord, because Hebrews tells us, the book of Hebrews, it tells us that we have a cloud of witnesses, witnesses who went through many situations worse than we are going through, but they held on to God. Some didn't even want deliverance. And they could have gotten deliverance. So let's trust God today. And let us serve him with all of our heart. And remember, when the preacher says that Jesus is coming, let us take action. Just as what we did two days ago. Let us take action in Jesus' name. God bless you. And remember, we are at number 26 Prince Street in Port of Spain. Hallelujah. Every Sunday morning we are there from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. You are most welcome to come there from 9 in the morning a.m. until 11 30 and then on wednesday we are on the zoom we can send you the link that is available to all who want to be on the zoom on wednesday for our prayer and fast so god bless you pastor 
Valentine Jr. and your beautiful wife, my sweet daughter. Lord, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who has joined us together today on the radio, on Zoom, on Facebook. Um, may we want you to come back next Thursday, listen to us. Um, if you have any comments, please post them. I definitely respond to you on both uh, Facebook and on Zoom. Uh, we just thank you for tuning, tuning in, and I will see you back next week. Thank you. Love you. May God bless your week and continue to have his grace and mercy reign on you. Hi, I'm Valentine Garcia. And I'm Nikki Garcia. Please join us on the Final Hour broadcast every Thursday at 9 a.m. on the Street 919 FM radio. Every week we will journey into the amazing Word of God. So please join us. See you then. The views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of the Street 919 FM. Promotion presents All White Affair Cooler Cruise on Sunday, the 3rd of July, 2022, on board the luxurious Embassy Yacht. Boarding at the Port of Spain waterfront, Ryston Road in Port of Spain at 2 p.m. Sailing Trivia. Music by Sensational Sammy, Dr. Ross, and the guest DJ Selector Mafia. Advanced tickets are $200. Pay more at the door. For more information and for tickets, contact Romeo at 748-9335 or Sweet Vanilla at 793-7425. No oversized coolers or glass bottles allowed. We don't send any people better. We cause the trouble, trouble, trouble. Councillor for Monrepo Navet, Nigel Cotier presents Splash, Bubbles and Fold. Saturday 9th July at Monrepo's grounds from 10 a.m. Splash, Bubbles and Fold. Lots of prizes to be won. Look out for the Councillor's Cup Small Goal. Register now by calling the Councillor's office at 610-2861. All teams must be registered. There is no registration fee. Splash, Bubbles and Fold. Saturday 9th July, Monrepo grounds from 10 a.m. The football starts at 10 a.m. and the fun events will start at 3 p.m. Join the winning team with Pastor Alkaline John every Monday from 10.05 a.m. to 11 a.m. and every Wednesday evening from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. live on the street 919 FM as he talks about La Vive, the power of five fruits, one of the most powerful antioxidant supplements on the market today. The five superfruits in La Vive are mangosteen, acai, pomegranate, gogi, and nuni. These fruits have a positive and profound impact on human health performance and disease. Listen to Pastor Alkaline John every Tuesday at 9.05 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. on the street 919 FM as he gives live testimonials of the Laviv healing powers. To get more information, you can contact Pastor Alkaline John at 516-286-7079, 516-286-7079. The views expressed are not necessarily the views of the management of the Street 919 FM. The following program is brought to you by Straight and Narrow, the way of life, the health store. Hi, good day, good day to everyone. It's a blessing to be here today. I'm going to love you. have the amazing Maria Batista. And I 